Dylan Reinhardt is a recent graduate from Tiffany University who majored in music. Within the past few years, he has immersed himself in his passion for creating music where he goes by his pseudonym, Young Enrique, under which he has released four albums, with the most recent being this past week, and the album is titled My, My Midwestern Story. And Dylan, Dylan experiments with hip-hop productions, soul storytelling, and country music roots. He, along with Jonah and I, are the masterminds behind the production of this podcast's introduction song. So today we're going to dive into conversations about music, inspiration, and as always, topics about life. Please welcome Dylan Reinhardt. Oh, hello, hello. <laughs> How you doing today? Not bad. Not bad at all. Start off with a, a customary cheers. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Here we go. Cheers. Yeah, that was a good intro. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't mess up anything? No, no. It was all good. Yeah. Cool. Well, let's just get right into it, man. All right. Uh, I figured, uh, let's talk about music. Just go right into that. Okay. Uh, when did your passion for, for music start? Oh, dang. Uh, really young. Really yeah. young. Yeah. It was probably like seven or eight. Yeah. I started like loving, oh, like that was like during the time like MTV was like, MTV where they showed music videos and my sisters were older than me so they would always were into different music and they kind of showed me music and I was also my parents also liked music too so it kind of was just inevitable that I also fell in love with music so I was always trying to like imitate the people on TV trying to rap or like sing or beatbox or anything like that or play guitar so okay yeah, I was like really young age nice was yeah. uh do any bands or artists stick out to oh, you so many so many, because I had such a wide variety, <clears throat> because my dad, he would listen to, like, ACDC, Aerosmith, so I got really into that stuff, the Eagles, like, a lot of classic rock with him, and my mom, she was into, like, Michael Jackson, and, like, a lot of those pop stars back in, like, the 80s, so I got into that stuff, too, and then my sisters, they liked the, what was popping during, like, the early 2000s, late 2000s, which was, like, Black Eyes Peas, and Shakira, and all that stuff, so... I was like, it was a wide variety of songs. So, yeah, it was like all that. I would like absolutely love listening to. And I still listen to that stuff today. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. It's so good. Sweet. So there's, I mean, you you mentioned a lot there. There was. Oh, yeah. There's so classic much. Classic rap. Yeah, some I love rap, all Some hip hop. Oh, yeah. Some, yeah. Some country too. Like when I was working for my dad, he would be playing country sometimes on the radio. So that too. I, I was exposed to so much music. It wasn't a genre that I wasn't exposed to. So so at the, the young age, was it something that you ever envisioned yourself actually pursuing with either the music degree or actually starting to record music? I uh, mean, there was definitely a, a love there, but did you mm-hmm. ever think that you would do it as as a, that serious of a hobby? Uh, It was on and off, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it was like I always had it as a hobby, but it was always like, oh, maybe I want to go into criminal justice, which I did for a little bit. But then it was just always back and forth of like, am I really going to make it? Because it was always like, I don't know, I just didn't see the opportunity there, but I just kind of went for it, and I saw more opportunity of just, instead of becoming a singer, I could do so much more in music yeah. than just that, or becoming famous, because I don't really want to do that stuff. Yeah. So. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. That's cool. So, mm-hmm. so you did start out in criminal justice, though? Yeah, I did, actually. At Tiffin, yeah. So I actually kind of wanted to become a cop or something like that, or just go into cybersecurity, and then I, don't, I just joined the music department there. Got in a hip hop group, started rapping and making beats, and I was like, "Man, I really love this like so much." And I'm like, "I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna go for it and just learn everything I know about music and really get into it." So yeah, yeah, oh, it yeah. was it was a good time. That's cool, man. Yeah, let's uh let's talk about the majoring in music a little bit. <laughs> Major in so music. That's, yeah, that's yeah. your major, right? Yeah, that's my. Okay. Yeah, it was like a bachelor of arts in like the music industry. Okay, like music business, pretty much. Yeah, that's okay. kind of what I majored in. So well, it, what's the title? Of your bachelor, my bachelor, bachelor of arts. Okay, right? and yeah. then that's just what it's called. Yeah, like majoring. I'm pretty sure it's just called music industry. Okay, I think, yeah, that cool. was like the major. So that's a completely different realm. That's yeah. actually something I teetered on a little bit when mm-hmm. I was going to go to college. I was looking at potentially doing something like sound engineering, mm-hmm. um, which is a little bit of that industry. Oh yeah. It, so, which it is, yeah. Which that's some stuff I actually learned. I actually took a ta- or a class in like uh, live sound, and also took class in studio sound too. So okay, it's nice. like everything. Like that major, 
I learned about marketing, sales, and then on the other side, I was learning, like, studio stuff and uh, live equipment. So, it was a broad major of the music industry. So, uh, take take me a little bit through, like, what things did you actually pick up and learn from this degree? Because that's a completely different Mm -hmm. side of a world that I have... I have no oh, yeah. basis on. Yeah. So like it, you come in with a knowledge and a passion for music already. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what are things that you actually took away from your experience and what you learned from to, and maybe expand your knowledge on the yeah. industry as a whole? Um, It was a lot because I did a lot of outside stuff outside of the classroom. So, and that's really where you're going to learn where if you're just taking at face value of the classroom, you're not going to, you, you learn some stuff, but you're going to forget it like everybody else that goes through a classroom. So I did a lot of stuff outside. Like, as you can see, I was making albums or learning how to produce. And then I was also helping people like set up with live equipment. I was helping Ban Acre. Sometimes I'll be their sound guy. So a lot of that stuff, I was just practicing, practicing of that stuff. And I was taking that out of what I've learned from class. I would take that out to the outside world and kind of uh, just learn all different things, whether it was uh, how to mix, how to EQ, how to master um, tracks, or how to, you know, do that on live equipment and how to set that up. So it was all different stuff. And even, like, marketing, I would learn about that stuff, which was very interesting. But I don't think I'll ever go into anything like that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely a hands-on. I love uh, setting up equipment and uh, recording and doing all that fun stuff. Oh, yeah, man. Mm -hmm. That's a... (laughs) <laughs> it's such a different world. <laughs> it is. But it's yeah, cool it because, I mean, you definitely, I feel like you'd have to gain an appreciation for oh, yeah. so much of other parts of the industry that people don't grasp. You know, like you said, people see maybe the figures of the celebrities. Oh, yeah. And, no, that's, and that's a, all that they know of that goes into it. And it's like, hey, there's a whole another layer and level oh, of shit yeah. that goes on. There's so much because that's exactly how my parents are. And that's how a lot of people are around here. Yeah. You know, you don't, there's not any, you don't see people pursuing music around here that's not a common thing yeah so like the first thing is like oh get a like get a job like a regular job but and then they just think well music oh you're trying to be famous or you're trying to be a famous singer or rapper or whatever anything like that and it was just like there's so like i don't really want to do i'm like i'm making albums for fun but i'm in just to learn that stuff and like if i get a job like there's so many other jobs of just not of instead of becoming famous like as i said before like I'm looking at jobs of audio visual technician. So like it's setting up anywhere you think music is. Just think about your daily life. How much do you hear music? You hear it when you're walking into Walmart. You're hearing it when you walk into every like single building. Yeah. It's like who set up that stuff? That's someone who set up that stuff. And that's usually audio visual technicians that are setting that stuff up. It's kind of like a part of a construction team, you know? Yeah. So there's different jobs that you can you can find out in that world of music industry. It's not just become famous or go to LA because I do not want to do that. <laughs> so do, uh, do you, why do you find yourself wanting to stray away from <laughs> that pursuing fame or uh, moving out to LA? Uh, I think it's just because it's so cliche and just how I grew up. Yeah. I'm not a very, I just feel like you got to be selfish. You got to have like that Kanye West, like, ego and I just don't really have that I just have a very I'm just want to have fun yeah and kind of just live my best life and do what I love and learn different things and like if it happens it happens but like that's not my main goal at the end of the day so I don't know it's just how I was raised I was never wanting to have all eyes on me you know yeah. I just kind of do this stuff for fun so and it's also really cliche I feel like everybody's doing that the market's so flooded with uh, everybody's trying to be famous and fake who they are, oh, I got gold chains or different stuff like that, and it just turns me off. It's like I don't want to do that. Yeah, and so. posers, posers who start a podcast, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit. Um, did I? I definitely agree with you, hundred percent. Like, yeah, people around here don't. Oh, sorry, I, on the fame thing. Yeah. I want to step back one last thing in the earlier yeah, yeah, comment no, as yeah, well. No, go back on uh, people not pursuing mm. music around here as a career. Yeah, and there is maybe a false sense of understanding of actually what goes mm-hmm. into it. Was that, was that intimidating decision to make for yourself? And was that difficult? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, it definitely was. Cause I even was, I was already asking my question, like myself, those questions. So it didn't help. My parents were also on top of me about that stuff. They weren't like too bad about it, but they were just like reminding me like, 
are you sure you want to go into this? Because, like, what jobs are you going to do? And they, they still do it. Like, like yeah. what jobs are you going to get? What jobs are you going to get? What can you do with that? And that's just, like, a normal thing as a parent and also, like, aunts and uncles and all that stuff. And just, but You get tired of ever answering it? Yeah. <laughs> After the first or second time. Yeah. I already got tired of that. Yeah. But I know how it is. It's just how it is. So, yeah. I mean, I'm going to answer it every time. No. Just to make them feel more comfortable. Yeah. So that's uh that's cool as fuck, man, because people people don't make that jump a lot. Mm-hmm. If they do have that interest, it's like uh people are conditioned to yeah. go into something that might be uh looked at as more of a I don't know, societal successful yeah way of managing your life or whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. And it, it's tough. So not many people do it. So I, I respect oh, yeah. it a lot, man. And that yeah, that's one thing I noticed too is like I feel like we're the first generation like around here to actually be doing like, I guess, entertainment stuff, you know, like you with your po- podcast, you got Jonah with his film, yeah. you got me with my music. Like, it just seems like I was like, everybody, you know, before me had interest in doing that stuff, but never like kept on doing it and actually try to pursue a job in it. So it's kind of interesting to see that that's like of us like pursuing that stuff. Yeah, it's cool. I, d- I definitely think it's a generational thing mm-hmm. of more and more, and more people are going to feel yeah. comfortable uh, maybe ex- pushing the boundaries of yeah. that, which is awesome. I, I mean, if that's what you're interested in, why, why wouldn't you? Yeah, exactly. And I think it also helps that the internet too. Like you, you can be from around here and still like have an audience or like find a way out or find some type of opportunity to like actually pursue that stuff. So yeah, I think it's cool. Nice, man. Yeah. Um, what's, uh, let's go into your music a little bit okay. and I, I'm genuinely curious. Yeah. I, I mean, we've only talked really a handful of times. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. Been around. So mm-hmm. I don't have a huge basis. I think <laughs> my main recollection was before I went off to college, mm-hmm. I think I remember you doing some beatbox and stuff with Band yeah. Acre. Yes. And that was basically oh, yeah, that's my just... only yeah. Frame of reference for for who you and were as a person. Next second, you know, I'm dropping albums. Yeah. Yeah. I don't so, know. Uh, what's is there a story behind Young and uh, Young Enrique as uh, your stage name, whatever you want to call it, or do you want to yeah. talk about that a little bit? Like why why I chose Young Enrique, or just like yeah, does it mean anything? Yes. Or is there is there a specific reason, or yes. is it just you throw it out no. there? <laughs> no, I'm not like. Uh, so it does have a reason for the Young and Enrique. So Enrique, uh, that was my grandfather. That's his name. Okay. It, but they went, he bought, he went by en- Henry. So, but on the, his birth certificate, it was Enrique. Okay. So I thought it was a little, you know, I would use that because young Henry sounds kind of weird. So I was like, young Enrique sounds cool, you know, give some respect to uh, his roots. So, and then I also have so many comments from my Messiah side, which is my mom's side, always saying I look, I have like similar um, attributes and that I look like him. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to do Young Enrique, you know, something back to the roots, you know, and kind of giving props to him because there was, um, I would never went to college if it wasn't for him or had the money for that because he definitely helped uh, uh, pass down money to us and all the kids to be able to actually go to college. So he actually helped me pay for like at least a year or two of college. So it was kind of cool. So I was – Wanted to give him some, uh, I guess, some respect. So, fuck yeah, man. That's yeah. uh, that's probably one of the most powerful ways you can. Mm-hmm. Right? So uh, it wasn't just like a cliche young something, young money or anything like that. Like the young actually has a point to it. So yeah, I just feel like some people don't know that. So okay, that's cool, man. Yeah. Um, f- I was on the four albums. That's yeah, correct, four right? Yeah, four albums. Yeah, have, did you listen to every single one before uh, this? <laughs> I listened to the most recent one, and yeah, then I listened to fun. the singles outside of that. Yeah, no, it's fine. No, my my older albums are, uh, they're all right. What's uh, what's the reasoning for, for choosing the the genre and style mm-hmm. uh, that you're going for? Um, it just kind of, it felt right. Um, it started with my older album with, uh, there's a song on there. It's called Barnyard. After I made that, it was kind of just a domino effect of just me falling into my sound that I wanted okay. and just kind of like bringing it back to roots. Like it just felt right. It didn't feel like I was faking anything. It's just like, oh, yeah, I'm just having fun telling things that saying things that I grew up with and also just putting a spin on things. Um, so it was just kind of fun. And 
I was also listening to a lot of artists. Well, not a lot, because there's not a lot of artists that actually are in my genre that I was doing this well, past album. What do you What do you call it yourself? It's like a country rap, kind of. It's like country rap alternative, yeah. kind of like blues, different stuff. Like there's a lot of different uh, inspirations for it. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Jeez. That's the beer getting to me. But yeah, so that's what I would call I would call it like country rap. So I was listening to like Davis, yeah, David Morris, Up Church. Up Church is a big one uh, around here. And they like country rap. Yeah. They kind of rap along country beats. So, okay. Yeah, that was my biggest inspirations. And when I hear country rap, my mm-hmm. biggest, my first thing that I go to when my thought is, is Colt Ford. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking about. And yeah. I'm not going to lie, man. I'm not that into that, that style of music. Yeah. And I yeah, was no. like, it just caught me off guard. And so like, not a lot of people do it. Yeah. But like you said, Upchurch, that's a pretty famous and successful yeah. person that does it. And it's kind mm-hmm. of building your own down. Yeah. When I went into listening with your new album, mm-hmm. I, I fully think that, from what my from my perspective, mm-hmm. it feels like there is a solid growth in you trying to de- trying to define yeah. your sound, which I think is awesome. I think it's mm-hmm. you can tell that you're, f- from my opinion, that you feel more comfortable with yeah. it, and you're just going through with what feels natural. Mm-hmm. That's just my yeah no, perceptive looking in on it. Yeah, no, it definitely did because it was just like I don't know all the stuff. It was like it was just. I don't know, before that, it just felt like I had to think so much of, like, what am I going to write? What am I going to write? Like, what are my inspirations? And this album, I was like, I just looked around. I was like, and, like, looked back pretty much. I was like, okay, I'm just going to write about that. I'll write about the farm. I'll write about, you know, drinking. I'll write about everyday life pretty much or just anything that I've seen growing up or people I've experienced in this, you know, country, rural area and kind of just wrote about that stuff, so... It was yeah. really easy because I'm always just in it. So yeah, you know. Are you doing everything on the album? Are you producing, doing mm-hmm. all the instrumentals? That's that's all yes, you 100. That's all. That's all me. The only thing I do is sam I sample the melody sometimes, mm-hmm. so I can find I'll find sa- samples of like guitars and stuff like that, and I'll put it in. But the beat, like the drums, the hi hats, all in the 808s. The vocals, all that is all me. And you're mixing it and producing yeah, it? Yeah, I'm mixing it, mastering it, producing it all the way, so. Hell yeah, man, that's cool yeah. as fuck. Yeah, it's tiring after a while, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. Mm-hmm. You, uh, you, you, this last one is called My Midwestern yeah. Story. Yeah, Is that 100% what you're going for? You just wanted to tell that yeah. piece of your story, of your, like, Pretty life? much, yeah. I just kind of wanted to, uh, yeah, bring it back to the roots, kind of bring it back to uh, what I'm all about. Um, and just give, uh, what is it? Maybe give like respect back yep. to like who I grew up with and who raised me and what I was around. Cause it's, it's a different story. Not a lot of people grow up in the country, like, or around this type of area. Yeah. Cause that's one thing I real. I think the biggest inspiration, what I realized is like going to college, not a lot of people grew up in the country like I did. So I really felt like out on the outside sometimes yeah. with a lot of different things. So it was just a lot of inspiration with that. Of just like, let me just be real and just say, have fun and just say the things that I grew up with instead of, you know, uh, faking it and just uh, not being myself fully like a lot of rappers are doing right now. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's cool. I mean, you're paying, you're paying homage to, to who you are. Yeah, exactly. So. And, and I think that it came through when mm-hmm. I was listening to it, it felt real. Yeah. I, I have a favorite track. Yeah. I was going to ask favorite that. verse. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask you what your what oh, yours okay. is first, though. Okay, what's my favorite? Okay, I would say on um, big truck, and then is the second verse starting off. It says, uh, <laughs> "Fuck a bitch who <laughs> shake ass like a hoe." I just want a real woman that catch bass like a pro, <laughs> and that's. <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite bar. I don't know if I'm ever going to make a better one, but <laughs> honestly, I just thought it was hilarious. And I thought it was, yeah, there's so much going on in that. Yeah. Love playing words. Yeah. Uh, um, so you think that potentially might be your peak? Yeah, it might be my peak. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be, I might have to stop making music after that. Yeah. Um, I went back to track two. Yeah. Track. What's crop? Is that crop? Yeah. 
when you came in with the first verse, yeah, that I thought that the verse, I love the verse on that song. Really? I was like, that's fucking good, man. Dang. I listened to it and I was like, <laughs> I, I really like the flow. Yeah. It's pretty chill. It's just like, like talking pretty much. Yeah. Just, yeah. I don't know. That one felt the most just, it flowed right in and mm-hmm. it came out and I thought it worked out really well with the track. Yeah. Then track three. Track three. Is that? That was Cargo Shorts? No. It's no, not. no, no. Bottles. 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 Yeah. yeah. That was a fucked up song. It is a fucked up song. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, and, and like the beat uh, completely takes it off yeah. of like, wait, why is this upbeat? Yeah. I really <laughs> like. I, I enjoyed that one. No. It, yeah. Yeah. That was. Uh, yeah. It was definitely fucked up. So my two favorite were, yeah. were Crops and, and Bottles. Mm. Uh, I, I really enjoyed the. The really dark natured tones of, of oh, yeah. bottles, mm-hmm. and then like you said, the the yeah. kind of opposition with the the upbeat. Yeah, it was like uh, bottles was like trying to be. It's it's like, how can I explain it? <laughs> it's like a guy, pretty much. Like it's like a man. Like you know, he doesn't talk about his feelings, and when he does, it's like not straight up. It's kind of just like in a funny way. Yeah. And that's kind of how it is. It's an upbeat. Like oh, you're you're like dancing. You're like oh, this is cool. Like it has a boom clap, kind of like a boom stomping type of feel to it. Yeah. And then you listen. And it's just like, this is this is messed up. Like yeah. he's talking about alcoholism. Like right now. Like <laughs> he has a problem. So, <laughs> so. Uh, do you want to talk about it out here? Uh, Are you okay yeah, with like yeah. coming out with your alcoholism? Yeah. And no. You no, talk no, about no, your no. Problems. No. Like that one. <laughs> I just had inspiration because there's a lot of stories I've heard and like, uh, just different things like of people around rural areas yeah where drinking is definitely a problem where or for some people where like it definitely like destroys families and stuff like that which is kind of bad yeah so that's not a that story is not necessarily first it's not first person no it's kind of just like an overall view of country issues pretty much kind of like talking about like because like you don't really hear you hear a lot about the city with their drug abuse but like we definitely have some substance abuse problems here. It just doesn't, or mental health issues, definitely, yeah. that people don't talk about. So that was kind of just shining a light on that of of addiction, pretty much. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool, man. Well, that those were my two. <laughs> yeah. I went back to those multiple times. Mm-hmm. I, I was I was into Yeah, them. no, I really like Crop. Yeah, because yeah. I was like a homage of like back to pretty much, because I never wrote really wrote a song to my dad or said anything about my dad. So that was kind of pretty much a, uh, it was it was like it it breaks down to multiple parts of the whole thing and it was just kind of i don't know just like giving some love to my dad of just you know how I was raised and just giving respect to him so yeah yeah overall and just saying you know whatever happens I know I know what I know and when it rains the crop grow you know so <laughs> <laughs> yeah nice man. I thought it, yeah what uh how how are you with friends and family listening to your music is that how do you take that is that do you get nervous to buy it or because um, i mean when i ever i do a video or anything like that yeah um and somebody's around me and they're like listening to it in front <laughs> oh of me and i'm God. like dude i i, I don't hate that. i don't want i to. hate that <laughs> i hate that 100 percent. i'm like don't do that okay. don't listen to my stuff in front of me yeah because it's just weird because like i want them to not be biased yeah. I want them to listen to it on their own and not me around. Yeah. Because, like, it, I feel like there's some, like, I don't know. I, I definitely feel like there's a bias. Yeah, like, are you like, pressured to listen to yeah, this just I because feel, I'm Yeah, exactly. Sort of yeah, because I'm around. Like, I don't know. Like, I'll do it when we're all partying and we're, like, you know, having a good time. And, like, my one friend's like, oh, yeah, play that one song that you made. And then I'm like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Let's have fun to it. And we all are singing along. That's a good time. But like when I'm just sober as a gopher, <laughs> and we're all just chilling, and he's just they like look at my video that I posted or anything like that or a song, and I'm just like, please turn that off. <laughs> yeah, it's just like I just want you to listen to that on your own time and like think what you're gonna think without yeah. me around. Yeah. Um, do you do you find yourself? So uh, another thing that I do when I make videos, yeah. either for a client or wedding video or anything, what it is, mm-hmm. I try to push it a little bit and like maybe try a little bit of things new yeah. And, and at least at the end of the day, I hope that as I make new projects that they are better than the one before. Mm-hmm. Um, what with music, how, how do you kind of like test yourself with those limits of your abilities and, 
and understanding? How do you continue to try to grow? Uh, it t- just practice. Like, and it, it usually it's me just studying music. It's usually me just listening to music and just finding different dron- genres that I like. So recently I've gotten into the blues a lot. So usually I try to mimic that or try to like, you know, try to make a beat like that or with a sample that's kind of like a blues type of guitar. Yeah. So it's really just me listening to music. I'm like, oh, I really like that. Let me go try to imitate it or try to get something similar in that style and just keep on practicing, keep on making beats pretty much like almost every day. So that's the biggest way that I've found my way of growth and just reaching out to people too that know more than you. Yeah. So, and I have plenty of that at uh, TU. So, do I, you go for it, man? Sorry. No, 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 no. You, you go. Uh, do you know how to read music? I used to. <laughs> I okay. still do. Yeah. I still know how to. Bass clef, a little bit less, but treble, treble clef for all the people that know. I, I know that. But uh, yeah, no. My band years are over with. So, <laughs> it's all like piano roll. Have you ever been in a a doll before or one of those uh music you said a producing. bunch of words that i don't know what yeah you exactly <laughs> i'm gonna have to explain every single one okay <laughs> so uh what okay what was the first word that i said it was piano roll piano roll so i'm gonna have to explain logic pro x to you probably <laughs> so so pretty much a doll is a i don't know what it actually stands for i think it stands for digital audio workstation Okay. So that's what a lot of people uh, use is like Logic Pro X or Fruity Loops now. And, well, Pro Tools was a big thing. Um, so it's pretty much just a music producing software. And that's it's exactly like Final Cut or like uh, Premiere. Okay. So it's pretty much set up the same way where uh, you're just, you have your audio files or your, for you it would be the film and you could cut it and do different things or record in there. So it's it's pretty like user friendly depending on which one you have. And uh, I went with Logic Pro and it's been probably the greatest thing, or I personally think is the best uh, program. Nice. So it's really uh, it would take hours for me to explain <laughs> all the way through what yeah. all all of it does. But pretty much it's a music program that I, I record. It. Anybody and their grandma can learn. And make a single or an album. Yeah. So uh, it would take a while. But. If I'm relating it back to video editing, I'm picturing yeah. um, you have a timeline mm-hmm. and you're kind of just going by ear yeah. and aligning like, hey, this beats off a little bit. And I need to yeah. like sync up that beat yeah. and then rhythm and just start layering on top mm-hmm. of that. And they make it really easy because they have like synchronization and stuff like that oh, where okay. it automatically like clicks in oh, and nice. different stuff like that. And you could just copy and paste. So it's just like the beat going over again. And then, okay. I'm going to get the hi-hats out where you can just delete the hi-hats and then uh, okay. different stuff like that and cut out different things and put in different things. So Nice, man. Yeah, so it yeah, it would take forever for me to <laughs> explain every single aspect of that program. There's this one thing that I saw, I think, I don't know if I read an article on it or if I saw it on Rogan or something. Mm-hmm. Um, they were talking about artificial intelligence oh, uh, and coming into music. Oh, no. What what are your thoughts on a that entering that industry? Uh, only a human can do music. Okay. Yeah, I feel like there's certain things AI can do, but it's I feel like a a human ear is so much more powerful than what yeah. an AI can, because like it's just an algorithm. You know what I mean? Like that's I I don't know. Like you can't choose what sound. I don't know because they have those uh those mastering sites like e master and different stuff like that. That's where you can like put in your track and like, it'll automatically like master or mix it. Oh no shit. Yeah. And it's like all an AI and stuff. So I mean, it sounds have all right. Have you ever messed around with it? I or? have a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, it's all right. I mean, if you're trying to skip some steps, that's fine. It's yeah. not going to sound bad. Like, especially with mastering, you don't have to worry too much with AI with that stuff. Cause, uh, it's really just turning up the volume and, kind of getting the levels right in all the different aspects in the song. But besides that, like, if it ever goes down to, like, just AI just creating music from scratch, it's just not – I'm never going <laughs> to listen to that. Uh, have you? I'm assuming you haven't heard of this project. I'm no, trying probably to reference not. then. 
Um, so I was looking into it. I, it was a little less um, interesting as I, as I thought it was. Yeah. So it's called something. I, I got notes here. What it's called? It's called it's called the Lost Tapes of the Twenty Seven. The world. Lost Tape. Okay. And the it's it de- it's a decent project. Yeah. It, so the Twenty Seven Club is the you know the infamous artist who died at twenty seven. Yeah. Either from like you know some sort of alcoholism or drug mm-hmm. overdose related back to mental illness shit. That's good to know. Did you know that? No. Oh, you I mean, never heard of that? No. Oh, so like the Kurt Cobain oh, okay, yeah, died yeah, at yeah, 27, yeah. Uh, Amy Winehouse, uh, Jim Morrison with The Doors. Yeah. All of them were drug overdoses at 27 That's years weird. old. Was Jimi Hendrix? No, he was older than that. Uh, I thought he was older. Yeah. Maybe he wasn't. Either way. I don't know. There, there, it's it's like a, a reoccurring pattern. So that is. Um, if you ever re like who we talked about earlier, if yeah. you have start in a love of IPAs before you turn twenty seven. <laughs> oh God, no. <laughs> you know what's about to happen. Yeah. I mean, hey man, you gotta laugh the IPAs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like never did a drug in my life and then at twenty seven, I'm like, oh, I think I'm gonna try this and then just drop dead. Yeah. So um what this was is they took those artist songs, they put them into this AI software. Yeah, twenty or thirty of them from each artist, mm. and it's was a language learning bot. So it it wrote it mirrored those songs and wrote a new four minute track. Okay, I've it, seen this stuff before. <laughs> I've seen this stuff with like they're doing that with podcasts too. Oh no shit! Yeah, <laughs> like they'll put in like thousands of hours of like Joe Rogan, and it'll just create an own like it'll create a Joe Rogan podcast, and it's like <laughs> it's not up to like standards. Like it's very random, but. Yeah. You could see that in the future it's gonna be kinda scary. Yeah. The the songs of this were were legit, man. I listened to them. The Nirvana really? one and the Amy Winehouse. It's like, dude, so but the it wrote the song and then the instrumentals were produced by an AI software. But then they had to have a singer come in and yeah. sing the lyrics. Okay. So they still have to have... Wait, so the AI made the instruments, too? That's what it sounded like. What the hell? Yeah. I could be wrong, I, I, but... I just don't know about that. I was under the impression that it basically created the rhythm and the instrumentals yeah. from whatever software they spit it through. That is crazy. <laughs> and you listen to it, and you're like, this sounds like it could be a B-side on Nirvana, no oh, problem. Oh, gosh. So I got I got the two songs here. Okay. This this first one, um, again... By the the project, the lost tapes of the Twenty Seven Club. Yeah, and I got the two saved here that I listened to. It was the Nirvana, and like mm-hmm. I said, it they spit twenty to thirty Nirvana songs in this. It wrote the song, and then they copied the instrumentals and then mirrored their pattern mm-hmm. for rhythm, guitars, and drums, and everything. And it produced this song, and then they got, got called in. Um, some cover bands mm. like that sound the most similar to his voice, mm-hmm. and they got this cover band lead singer to sing the song for him, and then they ma- mix it together and mastered crazy. it. So this is Nirvana AI software, Drowned in the Sun. We'll just like listen to it for like uh, a minute of it, and I'll s- want to get your thoughts on it. I... So are you aware of Nirvana? Have yes. you listened to music? Oh, yeah, okay. I'm definitely listening to Nirvana. That's crazy, man, right? <laughs> I don't know how I feel about the instruments. Did someone So that was definitely AI. I'm I'm not 100% sure. It was hard the articles were were spotty on like actually explaining the whole process. Yeah, was, yeah I don't know. That is <laughs> that is crazy though. So I was like, yeah, it's definitely not like a great Nirvana song, but like no, I could I would great, believe it was def- a recording. Oh yeah. I definitely believe, like, oh, yeah, there, this is something new that they made. So that's that one. And then the the Amy Winehouse one uh, might be a little more insane. Okay, let me get it pulled up here. There's just, it's hard to believe. I mean, just mm-hmm. the fact that it can even write Be- the lyrics. People are just not going to be needed anymore. <laughs> yeah. Just... And, uh, we're just working ourselves out. Oh shit! Out of existence. Out of existence. Yeah. Yes. Let's see if 
I just like not what I wanted. I'm messing up things here now. Oh no! This is why I need a, per a second person helping with this <laughs> shit. Me a Jamie. <laughs> So this one's Amy Winehouse, um, man I know. Yeah, this is a legit song. Yeah, it's crazy, man. It just sounds good. Yeah, it does. <laughs> oh my gosh, what the hell? So yeah, it's it's like you said. Yeah, we're working ourselves out of existence. Yeah, exactly. What, why are people doing this? <laughs> Stop what you're doing. See if I can get the chorus. It's it's intense, man. Yeah, it is. I thought it was cool. I want to bring it up to get your thoughts on it. Yeah, so, no, that is. So your, I don't like that. Your initial thought is no. No, just no. <laughs> Stop doing what you're doing. I'm um, just. I, I've never been a fan of AI. The thing that I question myself or I ask myself is, mm. is. Is it just a inevitable part of growth of art yeah. in general and music or whatever you want to call it? Because I think about how easy it is for us to make music or oh, yeah. videos and shit with mm -hmm. digital oh, yeah. media and people of the craft 40 years ago. I'd be like, oh, you guys are, you don't fucking record raw on film. Yeah. And I don't know. And it's like, I feel it's just going to be another tool and resource that to. That's what. <laughs> I'm thinking too, because I actually did a paper on this. I did a uh, analog of like, I did analog versus like Logic Pro or like any of those uh, softwares that make music. Okay. And it's very interesting to learn that like, um, it's a good thing and it's a bad thing because like, as soon as that computers came out that you could like just record through them, people had so much time in the studio. So it was just like, they're like, okay, let's start experimenting. And then here we come with EDM and electro and like dump step started. So it was just like a whole different fan base of things and different genres started because of like technology. Yeah. It was kind of interesting. It's just like to learn about that stuff because back in the days they were cutting that mm -hmm. stuff and like pasting where it just takes me like one click <laughs> yeah. to do that on a computer. Where it took like somebody like with an actual job and a family to like cut and paste and like put the tape together to have the full song. That's insane though, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> and I was like, What? I couldn't I would never go into music if I had to do something like that. So what was the conclusion or the purpose of your paper? Was it comparing contrasting for what yeah. what's better? Or? No, it was just like overall. Okay. It was just like pretty much research. It was just a research paper. So it was just kinda like saying like good and bad. Which was like good, yeah, you know all these like our technology brought in like a lot of different uh, genres because in a lot of experimental uh, elements, pretty much, where you have like Skrillex, whereas like we've never had that before. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like a whole different thing. Is that and a good thing or a bad thing that we have? Skrillex I don't know. In probably <laughs> not. No, I'm not a biggest fan. So. I don't know. Well, I mean, it's cool that everybody can make a song now and that everybody has a voice yeah. that can, but it's so over flooded with like people that are just not good. Yeah. So it's, it's a give or take. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's hard thing. I try balancing yeah. it as well. I, there's another video that just came out too with uh, Adobe software mm -hmm. um, for Photoshop and editing photos Yeah. where um, it's got AI software built into like the newest oh, Adobe program. It's like, Hey, my sky's overexposed in white. Mm -hmm. Build me a new sky. You click a button and it does all the, the Photoshop oh effort gosh. for you and it puts in the sky and it, it auto levels the colors of the rest of the photo. That's and scary. It, <laughs> it's super awesome. It's making these really great photos, but does it take more of the artistic yeah, piece out of it? I feel like if it, it does because anybody can be artistic then. Yeah. You know? Like, I just feel like, oh, well, I'm just going to go into it and click two buttons and already have a photo yeah. without, like, any, I don't know, creative. I don't know. I just feel like the creativity is gone now. Yeah. We're just getting less and less. I don't know. Yeah. It's, just, it's uh maybe some sort of de-evolution. The, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But like, it's just making this, us dumber and <laughs> The lazier. same thing with memes and TikTok, though. <laughs> it's the, the inevitable. Don't even, get, <laughs> don't even get me started on that. It's just, oh, man. People just dancing. Are you not on TikTok? I am on TikTok, but not for those reasons. <laughs> not for like all the famous people that are on there. 
Maybe um, you should just start making some dances to your music when they come out, and then uh, I just don't know if that's <laughs> what my music is meant for. <laughs> maybe it'll be a TikTok phase every time. Yeah, you get maybe I'll get TikTok of... famous. Yeah, I'm just uh, I don't know if I want to. <laughs> there's good parts of TikTok, and there's a lot of bad parts. Yeah, it's just like, what is this? That's with anything, though. Yeah, like the oversaturation of the internet. It really is. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah. I, I. I don't know. I thought it was an interesting topic. Yeah. It the was. AI stuff is crazy. It is crazy to me. I think it's going to mold every industry, and we're going to mm-hmm. have to build and adapt on it. It definitely, though. I think it. It tests the boundaries of like a creative person and and what people are going to be doing in the future. Yeah. I don't know necessarily what that's going to mean though. Yeah, I don't know either. Just have to figure it out. Yeah, we're gonna see because <laughs> I I actually have no idea what is gonna be the new thing. Yeah. So, you just finished college, like yes, last week, recently. <laughs> yeah, actually last weekend. So, okay. Yeah. How how does that feel? And okay, back up one. How old are you now? I am twenty one. I'm about to be twenty two in a few weeks. Okay, so you're only yeah. twenty two years old. Yeah. Just finished college. Mm-hmm. How does this feel now that you've entered this space of your life? Of hey, that's a kind of a big step. Um, what, what's running through your head right now? Uh, I hate my parents for bringing me into this life. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, it, yeah, it's a lot. Um, it's scary, but it's also exciting at the same time because it's just like I can do whatever I want. Yeah. Pretty much, or like do the things I actually want and get and just actually have a job and not just be in a classroom. Like, it's exciting because I'm a very like hands on person and like I want to learn everything that I can about something that I'm really into, which is music. So, it's a uh, we'll see, you know. I'm like looking at every different place, uh, trying to get my foot in the door, yeah, pretty much. So, it's exciting, but it's also scary because I have no idea what the future entails, yeah. So, are you just basically applying to a bunch of places oh, yeah. and just seeing what happens? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's yeah. I feel like that's How, the best you, way to do it. If you get multiple phone calls back, uh, how do you feel like you're gonna make that decision of where you might end up? Um, I would say like it's uh, a lot of different things. I feel like um, just probably uh, pay. That's not the first thing, but. <laughs> Hey, that's it's, the first it's, it's one off the top of a, mind. It's gotta yeah. be a decision. Well, especially yeah. like if you're living in Columbus, pay. Like if I live, if I was living at my parents' house or like in this rural area, I wouldn't care because I can buy a house around here for or buy or find rent for an apartment like real cheap. Yeah. But like in Columbus, it's okay. I gotta start thinking about like money and like all this different stuff that I never actually had to think about. So that's definitely one. And I would say like just uh. I guess how big they are, you know, how known they are and kind of how they run things too. Yeah. So the environment and then, yeah. But at the end of the day, whatever I get, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go for. So, but, uh, but end goal is a hundred percent. It's <clears throat> going to be something to deal with oh, the yeah. industry, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. I was back and forth like all last semester and this semester. It was just like, I really want to do this because like COVID hit and I just started thinking about life like crazy. I was like, what do I want to do? Cause I had this whole plan like before COVID I was going to go and like, I had a, I was going to apply to go to Atlanta and um, have an internship with the studio down there. And then COVID hit and all that just went down the garbage. Yeah. So I started thinking, I was like, do I really want to do this? Like, you know, where are the opportunities? Because the music industry, entertainment overall just took a huge hit. So I was just like, damn, I need to, I was rethinking. But then things are starting to open up. So, and I've started finding jobs yeah. that were different and were necessary too. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I don't know, man. I, I don't personally think that that, sh- if uh, there's a, there's can be a downturn in any industry. Oh yeah, exactly. And like shit can hit the fan and every yeah. accountant jobs fucked, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's that's yeah. 100% a possible outcome. Mm-hmm. And oh, yeah. I don't know. I I wouldn't look at it like that of if if it's a scarcity or if like it mm-hmm. unstable. I don't know if there's necessarily st- stability in any position. There really isn't, no. Um anything can flip over on the side of its head. That is. Yeah. 
know. So, and with AI taking all of our jobs, <laughs> uh, who knows what's going to happen. That is true. <laughs> yeah. We got to worry about that. AI yeah. stealing our jobs. Yeah. It's going to be a whole, a whole thing. I It'll probably know. happen eventually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everybody's just going to be home, getting paid by the government, yeah. sitting on their ass, and AI's going to... Actually, we're probably just going to be eliminated. It's probably going to be like, what, what is it? War of the Worlds or whatever? Yeah, we're, with, uh, like Terminator. Yeah, we're like Terminator, yeah. <laughs> just where we're just getting eliminated. Uh, yeah. Maybe that's best. It probably, yeah. <laughs> if we created it, yeah, probably. <laughs> we're sitting here... Uh, Drinking beer, recording ourselves, talking about music. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> like how high up there are we? Do we really need to live for much longer? Basically, we're going to a dark place. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I didn't mean suicide. I just mean like. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't mean like that. <laughs> but like, yeah. No, I think about that all the time. My friends get into alien talk all the time. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Do you believe in aliens? Oh, hell yeah. Why, why not? Uh... What do you mean, why not? I just feel like the galaxy is so huge. Like, or not even the galaxy. I just feel like the whole universe is like, they've already proven that there's so many different planets yeah. out there. I just feel like there has to, and it doesn't have to like look like me and you, but I just feel like there's some type of life form out there. That, Here, here's a maybe, I agree with that statement. That's yeah. That seems obvious to me that there's some sort of other life form out mm-hmm. there in, in the universe spectrum. Yeah. Do you think that that other intelligent life has been on Earth? I don't know. I mean, they do have the Pentagon releasing <laughs> that shit, but, like, is that, like, a hoax or, like, what's happening? Yeah. Is that, like, the Russians? <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like maybe they might have, yeah. I mean, they have the whole, like, ancient alien stuff. <laughs> it's fun to watch. Yeah. But I don't know. It, uh, nobody knows. How... How do I know that you're not an alien? Exactly. How do I know that you're not an alien? That would, Here we are now. Yeah, maybe a question an alien would ask <laughs> yeah, is exactly. like, I don't know you're not an alien, just yeah. to really deflect off of you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just, I, I feel like it goes so deep. It's like the whole talk of like, is God real? Or like, is there heaven? Unless it just goes like, nobody knows. Yeah, maybe. So maybe, maybe somebody does. Somebody knows, but I don't, so... <laughs> I don't have any of the answers. I can just speculate. And so so you haven't had any, like, alien encounters no. that makes you re- really believe? <laughs> yeah, I had, like, crop circles. and <laughs> no. I never had that. No, not at all. Okay. Yeah. I, damn. I was really hoping for the crazy alien stories. Yeah, no. I I've, had, like, I've had, like, a little bit of, like, ghost stories, but that's about it. It's nothing crazy, though. Yeah. Just, like, bumps and different stuff in the night, but that's about <laughs> it and different stories I heard from other people. So... Let's keep let's go let's keep going into this. Oh, I'm, God. I'm intrigued. Yeah, you're intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> what's uh what's the ghost stories? Do you the ghost do story. you believe in ghosts? I never really had a ghost encounter at all or anything like that. So I don't really I feel like there might be. Yeah. But I've heard other stories. I'm like that that sounds convincing how they say it. it's like I, I kinda believe you. Yeah. Yeah. But that could also have been a person. I don't know. Yeah. I, I just, I don't, I'm not a firm believer. There's different story. I don't know. It depends on the story. Yeah. I feel like, I'm like, okay, I believe that. Yeah. I mean, there's so many things in the world that we don't know. Yeah. I, I'm on board with that. I, yeah. I, I don't think it's a, it's a, it's an impossible question, but it's fun yeah. to, to ponder the, no, it the is. thought a yeah, little no, bit. I, jo- I joke around all the time. With that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I find, I heard somebody talking about ghost stories one time yeah. where they're like, it's fucking bullshit. I don't believe it one bit <laughs> because why are ghosts only at nighttime and in places when you're not comfortable? Yeah. He's like, if ghosts were real, why wouldn't they just be chilling at the fucking water park? <laughs> That's true. They're just sitting on your recliner drinking yeah, a beer. Yeah, exactly. Why wouldn't they just be chilling like during yeah. everyday normal? Like you're having a barbecue with mm-hmm. all your friends. Like why wouldn't ghosts be chilling out there? Because that's like where that they would true. be. But like, why is it always in a scary yeah, why situation? Why is it always in a scary situation? Yeah, that is true. <laughs> or don't they say like, uh, like spirits or like at least like demons, they attract to like fear. 
and stuff like that. I that's have what no I've idea. always heard. I don't yeah. know. That's what I've heard through like ghost hunters and yeah. shit. But like, I'm just like, I don't know. It could be. Yeah. I, I understand what alone. sort of media you can you consume now. You're we're on alien, oh, ancient God, aliens, no. and ghost that's hunters. Not, that's not. <laughs> no, no, not at all. No, that's like the stuff I would come home out. I would come home from school and be like the Bigfoot. Yeah, oh, yeah. Or like ghost hunters, and I would fall asleep to that. Yeah. And then wake up and do my homework. Yeah. So. Hey, man! All I'm saying is this is a decent <laughs> premise for album number five. Yeah, it is. Aliens, like just ghost, and, yeah, ghost. aliens, ghost, and Bigfoot. Yeah, Bigfoot. <laughs> Bigfoot is not real. That's all I gotta say. Oh shit! Now we got fighting words. Yeah, we have. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone want to throw hands over that? I'm ready. I all just right. don't. Yeah. So, so you're you're <laughs> indifferent on aliens. Or yeah. You say aliens exist, but you're indifferent on them being yeah. here. Ghost is you're indifferent. You said yeah. you're not gonna know. But Sasquatch, no. But Sasquatch and Bigfoot said no. That's no. Okay. The thing <laughs> is, like aliens, that could be a thing. You know, there's so many different worlds. Spirits, that could be a thing because like you can't see them all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's such a, it's like in a different universe or different wherever they are. But like Sasquatch of a monkey, um, or a man that's like. 10 foot tall like and we have all this technology around the world like we literally have cameras <laughs> everywhere we have like gopros you can put on like a little like on helicopters and like uh what is it a little uh what is it oh man i'm losing my words what is it i don't know a little, a little like uh rc like why am i Drones? Yeah, drones. They have like drones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, this argument is completely out the window now. But drones, and we can't, you can't just find them in the woods. Yeah. And there's just like no like video evidence besides the shitty like 70s one. I don't know. Yeah. I just don't believe it. Okay, that's fair. You know what I mean? <laughs> just fine, yeah. Like there's no way a monkey, a 10 foot dude can just hide in the woods without anybody seeing them or having film of them or a picture. Okay, what about Loch Ness Monster in the ocean? I feel like that's not true. I feel like I well, read we're still it. finding new new uh, species I feel like, in the ocean. Oh yeah, like I believe giant squid. Okay, you know because yeah. that's actually true. They <laughs> yeah. actually did find giant squid, yeah. and I think that's like possible. But like a megalodon? Uh, hell no! Like, <laughs> where's that thing gonna live? And how have we not seen it? Uh, have you watched Congress's Godzilla? They I live have. in the center of the. Oh the yeah, earth. they live in the center <laughs> of the earth. How can I? I <laughs> God, come on, man. How can I forget that? <laughs> Jeez. Yes. All right. So, Sasquatch, that's that's a no go for you. Yeah. All right. We're, we're gonna take this one little step deeper. Oh God. Uh, you tried it on a little bit with uh, religion and oh, yeah, uh, higher yeah. power. Yes. Um. What's what's the thoughts on that what's one? What's the thoughts on that one? Uh, being raised Catholic on both sides. Uh, I would. I'm strong believer in there's a higher power, I think, but I don't like, I think there is some type of higher power, but I don't know what to say. Like besides yeah. that, I don't like when it comes to like structure of religion, it's just hard to follow. Yeah. And like, I don't know. I'm, I'm more, I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. Okay. So like, I, I don't always follow everything that goes into religion because I feel like man built church, but like spiritually, like that's just built within us. Yeah. So I took a religion class too, and I learned a lot, and that also like built my uh, spiritual, um, a lot because I was like, I would research. There's like different questions you would ask us. It was like the best professor ever. You're so chill, and you would just be like, yeah. So how did the Seneca? natives like around here have like the same concept of like heaven and hell as people across the world that they never met it's like is that so is it true or is it just like who put this in us who put this idea in us that we there has to be some higher or lower power where yeah. like you got to do good and you'll go to a good place and if you do bad you go to a bad place like it's kind of interesting to learn that stuff because like so many cultures had that heaven or hell kind of whether they named it different they have those concepts but they never met before it's just kind of crazy to yeah. think no i 100 percent. so I've i definitely that, believe there's probably something higher because we're like programmed to think that yeah i i've heard that same argument for whatever you want to call it like you said in afterlife heaven or yeah. hell, where the so many cultures around the world 
at different times in his history, they've come and gone. Yeah. But for some reason, all have developed that in inner um, philosophy or way of thinking yeah. for an afterlife. And it's uh, it's a lot of cases to just be a coincidence. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I'm saying. So there has to be something that something that put us in that, like put that programming in us to finally get to it in, like, I don't know. Yeah. It's just really weird. Ha- have you ever heard of, like, the first principle basis? No, I have not. So it's... <laughs> I was going to go over with this on oh, this gosh. concept. Okay. So the first principle is like you just yeah. keep pulling the layer back yeah. until you get to the root yeah. of the conversation. So you just like keep asking yourself questions. So mm-hmm. It's like, well, what's the reason for this happening until you get to the basis mm-hmm. or the origin. And like, yeah. that's what you need to build off of. Because mm-hmm. if you're building off of anything other than that, yeah. then um, it's, it's room for like branching off and like having error essentially. Yeah. Like you need to figure out what's the original cause and then you can actually find the solution to it. Yeah. That's kind of like the first principle ways, ways of thinking that is. So now we're at yeah, this, this, this question of yeah the higher power, yeah, higher power. You, you said that it, it's something programmed within us. Yeah. Or are you alluding to that? We're in a simulation. Oh no, not this. <laughs> I'm going to back out of this real quick. <laughs> Oh man, is that? I don't a, think so. No, okay. I think I think we're here. I think we're here. I've heard that theory, but yeah. and it blows my mind. But I'm like, it's a good story, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I just I just feel like we're here. So okay, yeah, that's about it. I don't I, know. I'm we I, can't, I'm digging ourselves into a rabbit yeah, hole. Yeah, you're really digging yeah. like down deep. I'm like, I I would love to go into that, <laughs> but I'm just like, no, man. There's then we're gonna go into multiple different theories that I've yeah. like researched. I'm like, ah. There's I I, I want to there's one more theory that I want to propose to you. Yeah. I, I'm by no means the yeah. the originator of this theory, but I read about it on Wikipedia. Mm. You know, so I'm kind of an expert. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> you're a high school expert. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's all that. Um, it's called the the many worlds theory. Yeah, are you aware of this one? Is it like the multiverse? Kind of. So yeah. it's. I kind of believe in that stuff because isn't there like actual science behind that? Yeah. yeah. The, the science is hard and I can't explain off the top of my head yeah. without looking into it again. Mm-hmm. But it, the idea is, and this might parallel with the, the reason for seeing ghosts and shit. Yeah. It is at every time there is an action, there's a reaction. Yeah. So the many worlds theory uh, dumbed down in a short explanation is every time you make a decision to that's binary mm-hmm. and you make that decision to go right. There is a version of you that went left and that another version of you is created and they're living their own version okay. of their life from yeah. that decision. Oh yeah. I've seen a Rick and Morty uh, episode <laughs> of this. Uh, yeah, no, I, it could be possible. And there's probably yeah. actual science behind it, which is crazy. Yeah. That is, <laughs> that's like a butterfly. Yeah. Effect essentially pretty much. Yeah. yeah. And that then is, there's another, y- Basically parallel universe that with is you. Crazy. So I can like meet another me and just be like somewhere totally different. Yeah. Totally different person. Yeah. What if you met another version of yourself, what what do you think that that version of yourself would be doing? <laughs> I don't even want to know. I don't want to know. I mean, being a cop, probably. Yeah. Probably like the biggest thing I was like, biggest thing I would like crossroads in my life was probably like the school thing. Yeah. So that or either just happy in general. Okay. And I'll be like, yeah. Wait, so a version you'd be happy. Yeah. You could, because you're not happy. <laughs> I'm figuring out life, man. I'm 22. <laughs> yeah. I'm too young to be happy right now. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> All right. That's fair. Yeah, exactly. You gotta, you gotta grind to be happy. Is that, is, do you actually think that's true? Um, I don't know. I feel like we're getting in the whole like what is life question. And <laughs> hey, what, we're inching our way towards. Yeah, that we're inching time. that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I guess I feel like gr- I don't know. I feel like every I feel like happiness is measured in different ways. Yeah, you know, I feel like whether it's a job or family. I think my biggest thing is uh, friends and family. Just the people around me is what really makes me happy. Okay, of anything. So. So yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> that's the biggest thing. Yeah. Um, bush light. In bush light. Yeah. You need another one? 
Yeah, I do. <laughs> right, well, we I also can... need to take a bathroom. Break. All right, yeah, we'll take a break now. That's fine. Hell yeah. There's also uh, another one that do like. He, what was it? He robbed a plane. What? Like a, a commercial a plane? plane? Yeah. And it was like a whole thing, and he got away with it. Well, so to speak. But like he held up the plane and said, "Give me." Or he has a bomb. He literally like gave a letter to a chick next to him. He's like, "I have a bomb." And then, like, they gave him a bunch of money and, like, transferred it to his account. And he jumped out of the plane with a parachute. And it was, like, pretty much like a Delta plane, kind of like that. But it was, like, back in the, I think it was, like, 80s or 90s. That's real? Yeah. Like, he jumped <laughs> out in Mexico. What the or something. Fuck? Yeah. I don't know. I forget what it was. Uh, I forget what his name was. But it's, like, a whole big story back in, like, the 80s or something like that. Hmm. I've yeah. never heard of it. Yeah. I don't, it, it was crazy. I'm like, imagine, and you have like a, like, there's so many different, like, parts of the story. It's just like, what the hell? Like, this is crazy. So <laughs> you just got on a plane and just decide to get some money and just jump off of it. Like, what? It's so <laughs> weird. That, uh, yeah, when you hear, like, stories that are actually true. Oh, yeah. And it's uh, verifiably true. Mm-hmm. That Those blow your mind. Oh, yeah. Because it's Especially, like, like things that are just, like. Pretty much mysteries, unsolved mi- mysteries. I yeah. love that shit because it's all true, and it just leaves you wondering. Like you have your, th- you, you think what happened, but it could have been totally opposite. Yeah, could have just been something normal. Who who was the the serial killer cult leader? Oh, what the hell is his name? What are you talking about Zodiac killer? Or are you talking oh. about? The what the hell is his name? Ma- Marilyn Marilyn Manson? Marilyn Manson. Yeah. yeah, did you hear that theory? No, what does that want? About he was like a CIA operative and they were testing LSD on him. <laughs> what? I don't know. I don't know anything about that one. That one's crazy. Yeah. But I've, I don't know. I've yeah, probably, li- so many. I just listened to Joe Rogan too much, I think, in the yeah, exactly. past. And you just hear a bunch of crazy ass shit like that. Oh, yeah, you do. Like, <laughs> I, usually I just go on YouTube and sometimes when I'm really bored, I'll just search up unsolved mysteries and just like watch that shit. And it's just really interesting because, like, it's true stories, but, like, at the end, you're just left wondering yeah, what's going to, like, what happened. Yeah. Well, there's so. something there because, uh, obviously, that's, like, the number one thing in the mm-hmm. podcast industry is true crime podcast. Oh, yeah. Just people talking about it. Because, it's like, it's true, and then it just leaves everybody just, like, damn, this is a fucking crazy yeah, story. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then they have their crazy st- uh, theories that it's just, like, this could be true. Like, yeah. anything could have happened to these people it's really crazy man we we uh went down some yeah different rabbit holes here <laughs> yeah, in the last did. conversation yeah. I, that was cool mm-hmm. that's fine i got an insight to your brain in a way of thinking a little bit yeah so i, I, I just love <laughs> everything yeah <laughs> i like all types of things so. what uh what you touched on some early music influences yeah um what let's Talk about music a little bit, and then I'm going to get into a little bit of hobbies and stuff, what else you're interested in, because mm-hmm. it sounds like a lot. Yeah. Um, is there anybody new in the music industry that you're really into now that you think is is super respectable that you would look up to now uh, as an influence or somebody uh, as an idol of some sorts? Um, anybody new? Not really. Um, pretty much the biggest one was, he's not new. But like his newer stuff, I really respect. It's uh, he's J uh, J Cole. Okay. You ever heard of J Cole? Like yeah. his newer stuff is just like I really respect it because it seems like he's going back to his roots, kind of thing. So it's like I don't know. I love like every album he comes out with. Yeah. Like I just think it's so like homegrown and like so like down to earth. Like he's just a person. Yeah. And it's just really cool. Like there's no other other artists that I really listened to. I was like, man, like this man is real. Yeah. <laughs> so. Because I just feel like so many ar- other artists are just putting on personas and different stuff like that. And I just get turned off by that. Usually I try to find lower grade rappers or lower grade singers. Yeah. Because they're the most real when they're not like always in the starlight. Like Taylor Swift or like Billie Eilish or whatever. Whoa, name dude. Don't is. hate on Billie Eilish, dude. I know. I'm sorry. She fucking. I mean, I respect her. I fuck with Billie Eilish a little I bit. I respect her. <laughs> I've never listened to any of her music. What? I respect her. You never listened to it? No, I just never. She's good. I, I think it's pretty good. I just don't really listen to that genre. I just feel like it's like e-boy, sad boy stuff. And I'm just I'm like, a sad boy, dude. It's 
yeah, that's fine. That's fine. You can. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna bash anybody. A listener, I, I respect her as an artist. Yeah. I think it's really cool because like she made a lot of her stuff out of a bedroom, like I do. Yeah. So I think it's really cool because it gives me inspiration of like, wow. So I could, I could become famous. Yeah. <laughs> could make but, it. Yeah, that's not the whole goal, but yeah, no. But hey, I man, respect at, it. if you're making shit mm. of anything, you want people to see it. Oh yeah, and consume definitely. it and. It, like fame is just a byproduct that yeah if you don't really want it to be in the limelight but like if you're making stuff i do too i want people to see it and consume mm-hmm. it and hopefully people can get something out of it oh yeah and that is you know it's kind of catch 22 yeah right? it is yeah that is true so yeah. i think the biggest thing is like i just want people around here to like it yeah and uh, so far a lot of people do so like that's the biggest thing of like, especially like friends and in, in immediate like family they enjoy then i'm i'm happy yeah and like <laughs> i don't really need any other for form- fulfillment i guess so yeah besides that yeah hey man i know like i said earlier in my perspective of it of listening to your tracks mm-hmm. of recently getting to know you a little bit yeah. i i see growth and i think it's <laughs> cool i think that's cool as fuck to see mm-hmm. of you really molding your style yeah. and stuff that you're passionate about and mm-hmm. and making it yours and and making it uh, consumable to yeah. me who who doesn't necessarily like country rap music yeah, exactly and it's like hey this is a pretty good jam and i mm-hmm. listen i listened to those tracks on a couple times this last yeah, week no. you so. know i always appreciate when people compliment me and stuff like not in like the ego <laughs> way but just like i i love hearing like their different perspectives on it pretty much yeah i'm just like oh wow didn't think about that you know yeah. or anything like that so that's the the biggest thing or just like hearing different people's different favorite songs. Cause I never would expect it from different people. Like different people have different songs from what I listened to. Like my mom had different favorite songs that I just never expected. Yeah. Same as my sisters and like friends and you. And I'm just like, it's interesting to learn more about because you learn about more about them. Cause it's like, Oh, they like that song. Oh, so they, they kind of relate to that more and they think like in that way. Yeah. You can so, kind of already s- start of assessing like their yeah, personality a little bit exactly. just based on and what you kind of learn more about people like that way. And yeah. I, I don't know. I've always been a social type of person. So it's, it's interesting. Yeah. That's cool, man. Really cool. I like it. I, I want to do a little bit of a, I don't know if it's called a, a game. Oh, uh, um, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to fire music artists at you. And, oh, gosh. Okay. um, I want you to say that you would, would fuck with them or like, no, they <laughs> fucking suck. Like, okay. So like basically a smash or pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like m- not in a a sexual way. If that's okay. yeah, yeah. No. All right. So I'm just gonna start throwing them off, and I just you just fire off what you got to say about it. All, right. All right. Okay. Post Malone. Fire. Okay. Fire. Absolutely love him. Uh, Kendrick Lamar. Also fire. Kind uh, of. <laughs> well, all right. What? Why not Kendrick Lamar as only a kind of? I don't know. I I. I I didn't really like his newest album, but his past two, yeah. like his newest ones, or not the newest ones, the first ones he made, the first two, yeah, great. Like Section Eighty, uh, Section Mad no. City, no Mad City and Blacker Than a Berry, is that what it is? Uh, P- to Pimp oh, Butterfly, Pim- to Pimp Butterfly, yeah, pieces of art, yeah, That's, those, those are, are good, those are great, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think, try to stay in the hip hop world or just branch out to go anywhere. Uh, stay in the hip hop world because I want to trash on some of those <laughs> rappers. Uh, low pump, fucking trash. Oh man, it's trash. <laughs> I understand what he's doing, but he's he's dumb. If you seen any video of him, he's just dumb. Yeah, six nine. Also dumb. <laughs> also, so Not, dumb. nothing to say about that one. Yeah, his music I can get down sometimes if I'm. You know, having a good time, but I don't know. He's just shouting for no reason. Yeah. Uh, what the hell's the other one I'm thinking of? Quinn. Uh, what the hell's his name? I can't even think of it right now. Quinn. Does he have, like, numbers? Yeah. What the hell's his number? X something. XIV or something. Yeah. Uh, I don't actually, really know much really of this. Yeah, I don't know much of his shit. I don't even know why I named yeah, it. Yeah, no. <laughs> I don't know really this him. I mean, you can start branching out now. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. I'm trying to think of, I'm riffing off these top of my head. Yeah, just like biggest stars. Yeah. What's, uh, where's your boy Drake for you? I like his old shit. Yeah. I like, uh. Bit of a sellout, huh? Yeah. You call him out right now? Yeah, he's a sellout, <laughs> bro. Pull up. <laughs> no. 
I think he is. Yeah, he is. I think he's so fake. I think yeah. he's so fake. He acts like he's a gangster rapper or something. I'm like, what are you? What yeah. are you doing? I don't know. So, what do you think of Machine Gun Kelly then? Oh, God, <laughs> I don't claim him. Ohio should not claim. Yeah. Machine Gun Kelly. That's all yeah. I gotta say. Girls hate that when I say that. And I'm like, you hate him? Is he? So a, apparently, is, that's a new thing. Is like, he a, a girl girls, thing? Yeah, he is now. Oh. What I've noticed, yeah, he's definitely a girl thing. He's like uh, that one uh, One Direction star. Harry Styles? Yeah. He's, he's like, like that. in that category? Yeah, he's, what in, the fuck? he's definitely in that category. Dude, my only no. frame of reference of actually listening to Machine Gun Kelly was back in high school when he came out with Wild Boy. Yeah, because that was good shit. <laughs> and, I thought that was good shit. Yeah, and then like most recently he came out with this punk cover mm-hmm. band. I'm like, what the hell? Happened. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, girls are just gonna be flocking to that. Yeah, the last thing I remember listening and to this guy was 2012. No, this is what happened. He got absolutely murdered in a rap battle. Oh fuck! By Eminem. That was pretty. So legit. then he was like, ah, "I gotta change style." He just can't guys. even do rap anymore. <laughs> yeah, he's like, "I gotta change genres." <laughs> so he went to punk. So uh, with the the other white rapper, how do you feel about Eminem? Oh, I fucking love Eminem. Everything all the way up through till recently. <sighs> That's a hit or miss. I think he's kind of a sellout. Damn, dude, you, you're fucking throwing shade at all these I people. Am. I just, <laughs> I don't want to say it because he's so good. Mm-hmm. He could rip my ass apart, but like with a bar, but uh, I just don't, I don't like his political stances. Yeah. That he, like he makes a whole album about it. I it gets know. tired. It gets dry. Like yeah. this isn't going to age. I don't give a shit about your political yeah, stance exactly. right now. Where like back then in like the early 2000s, like, it wasn't a political stance that he was saying. It was just him just messing with people. It was just yeah. a joke kind of thing, and I liked that. Yeah. It was just like, I don't give a fuck. I'm just going to say whatever I want, and I thought that was cool, where he was like, now he's taking a stance on the side. And it's just like, you know your fans, right? Yeah. <laughs> how, <laughs> like, how, uh, yeah, I get it. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm going to keep going through this. No, some. no, keep on going. How, on going. What do you think of Kanye? Oh, uh, I hate him as a person, kind of. Uh, I don't really hate him. I don't like him as a person, but as you gotta respect the music, an man. artist, yeah, he is. I guess he's, he's got one of the goats, man. Yeah, yeah he's, he's one of the goats. Uh, Kid Cudi, I like him. He's from Cleveland too, isn't he? I have no idea. I'm pretty sure Kid Cudi's from Cleveland too. Have you listened to their collaboration project, Kid See Ghost? I have. Oh yes, it was. It was pretty good. Yeah, I thought that shit was. I good. thought it was good. It was like some psychedelic rock rap. Oh, it stuff. was. I, it was. I was like, "What is this stuff?" Yeah, but it was good. I enjoyed it as well. Yeah, it was like experimental. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Do that. I was hoping that they would do some more shit together because. Yeah. Um, Kanye's dude. His I like old are, Kanye. I don't want to be like every like his, his song new projects says. are still pretty decent though. What was his newest one? Uh, yeah, they're they're not bad. Yeah, uh, they're not bad. But I definitely like the older Kanye. So when he went, when he didn't go insane, uh, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> I'm um, running out of hip hop artist of, of my recollection. Do you know Brock Hampton? Oh, I love Brock Hampton. Yeah. I think he's like a whole, it's not even like hip hop. He's like a sub genre. Yeah. Hip-hop. Those, those guys are good. They're so good. Yeah. I like them. Yeah. I'm trying to think I'm running out, man. Uh, who's Tyler, the creator. Oh, I love Tyler, the creator. I think he's such a, oh man. <laughs> He's so different. Yeah. He just doesn't care. I love, oh, I love Lord or Squad too. If you ever watched any of his skits, he, I have not. That's, that was his like jackass or okay. whatever his skit on like Adult Swim. Yeah. He, he had a whole show with all of his. That was uh, Tyler Squad. Yeah. And he, he has some funny skits that you have to watch. But no, I love Tyler the Creator. I think he's a goat. Yeah. Honestly. Okay. I got three more. Okay. Just because I'm running out of names. Mm-hmm. Mac Miller. Not bad. I'm Damn. not a big fan. Damn, dude. I love He's his, all right. His, I, I, I do really love some certain songs. Yeah. I, I love his, never like, actually got into His one. most recent stuff, but it's oh, Sad yeah. Boy. It's Sad it Boy music. It is Sad Boy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I do like his, like, Weekend song yeah. or whatever it was. But That was the next one for me. What was it? The Weekend? The Weekend. I, it's, it's all right. I mean... Damn, dude, like you, you are throwing another shade out here. He's he's all right. <laughs> no, I like it. He does have a really good singing voice, I would yeah. say. And yeah. like, uh, I just, a lot of his music, I just don't, it doesn't hit for me. Yeah. Okay. But like, if you go to Post Malone, all oh, that man, I love that man so much. Yeah, Post is awesome, man. Oh, yeah. And plus, like, you watch his interviews, then it's like, this dude's just 
oh, a fucking he's such good a dude. chill guy. <laughs> like he, I, I want to drink a beer with that guy. Well, you gotta be um his uh beer bong guy. Did you ever watch that interview? I did. He pays yeah. a guy like seventy k just to be the beer bong guy, yeah. and everywhere he goes, yeah, like one of his buds. <laughs> oh my gosh, I need to do that. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> like, hey, you want to hang out all day yeah. and just like hold a beer bong and be ready to bong beers whenever I ask for one? I'll give you seventy thousand a year, and you'd be like. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is, oh my gosh. Imagine explaining that job to your mom. <laughs> hey, who cares? Who, yeah, exactly. You don't got to explain to anybody. No, you that just be like, hey, mom, I'm getting 75000 Why? Just don't even ask. <laughs> so, um, yeah, with that, kind of extending that topic of artists and inspirations a little bit, I, of the ones that you just blatantly call out saying they're fucking sellouts, that's oh, fine. Yeah. Um, mm. Have you gone to concerts? Are you a big concert guy? Obviously, uh, with wish. COVID and shit, it's yeah. Kind of so yeah, I came to that age, and like now, COVID hit. So where the where I'm at, I just never went. Pretty yeah, much like I went to a what was it? I went to a Logic concert. Yeah, but I don't like Logic anymore. <laughs> well, he's retired, man. Good. <laughs> he's good. Yeah. I do like his rap style, but I think he's. The perfect example of quantity over quality. Yeah. Where I'm trying to do like quality over quantity. Yeah. And trying to see growth. And I just feel like he just threw stuff out and it was just repetitive. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, he was all about the the white guy that can rap really fast. Oh, yeah. I'm biracial. Like, <laughs> oh, man. Um, Is that the only yeah. concert you've been to? Yeah. And nice, I'm kind of sad about okay. it because I kind of want to go to like different. I don't know. What was it? I wanted to go to like, oh, it wasn't a Motley Crew. I wanted to go to a Motley Crew. I know that some of the other boys wanted to go to it. And I, oh man, I, I heard about it. And I was like, damn, I want to go to a Motley Crew yeah. uh, concert. I just want to go to like a, a rock concert yeah. really bad, but not like the new rock. I wish like ACDC was still around. Cause like, oh my God, I would go crazy at <laughs> one of those. But, I, I can't imagine. I, I remember I've talked to one of my friends' dads. Yeah. Like, he would, like they remember going and seeing ACDC in the 80s. Oh, my gosh. And it was just, like, they, every city they would go to would get, like, burnt down. Like, they would get that banned from crazy. cities because there'd be riots every time they would concert. Oh Someone like, hey, gosh. you're banned from playing here because half of our talent got destroyed. That is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, and that's just never going to happen. Yeah, no, that, that would never happen. Like, and that, oh, man. That's, that's so unfair that our parents got ACDC and now we got Little Pump and like <laughs> all this bullshit music. <laughs> well, um, if I, I, I've been big into concerts, me and Morgan, we yeah. went to quite a bit. I want to go to more. Um, so next, if, if they ever come back, uh, I'll hit you up yeah. if we're going to buy Please some tickets do. and oh, you yeah. can come along with. Uh, I need to. <laughs> Cause like, I just, I don't know. I just never... I guess me and my family never went, or like my sisters never. Yeah, yeah that I mean, yeah, big I, thing. until I was nineteen, going into college. Like yeah. Once I was college, I was my first concert mm-hmm. of uh, really getting into it, and yep. then we went to a, a ton after that. I mean, I went to so much through college. Mm-hmm. I just need to find cheaper concerts because yeah. oh, it would be cool to see Kanye or just different ones. I don't know, just like low key artists. Yeah, cool to see. Oh yeah, there's there's so many, and plus like if you respect them or like their music, yeah, it's fun to go to an underground yeah, show. It is, and there's this one rock band that they were coming up, and we went and saw them like six times. Yeah, because there was like twenty bucks to go see them, and they were touring everywhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. around Ohio. Yeah, so and why it's not? like fuck, dude. <laughs> like yeah. it was twenty dollars. They're awesome, and like there's fifty. To a hundred mm-hmm. to two hundred people that show up to these shows, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's like, hey, exactly. this is a good Why weekend not? time yeah. and hang out. You get front stage like and just rock to, out. Yeah, no, it's like going to a bar when they have like live music. Yeah, it's just a good time. So, yeah. um, concerts might yeah. be a future hobby uh, oh, if yeah. it come ever if it, it ever be. comes back from COVID. Yeah. Correction, it might be. What's uh? What are some other hobbies outside of music that you get yourself into? You're uh, interested in aliens. Yeah. No. Fuck, dude. We Besides went, watching YouTube yeah, and YouTube watching those stuff. YouTube and ancient aliens. Yeah. Music. What, what um, else is there? I like playing video games a lot. Uh, but besides that, but um, I don't know. I've been trying to get into hunting again and uh, fishing. Yeah. So just kind of uh, doing stuff that you can actually do around here. 
Yeah. Besides going to the bar. I don't know if that's a hobby going to Sonny Jack's, but <laughs> maybe I'll put that down. I mean, because, it's probably tailored along with hanging out with friends. Yeah, hanging that's out with friends people. is a big one. Yeah. Well, I was going to, I mean, 100%, but like, yeah. I mean, going to Sonny Jack's is like, well, it's a hangout spot because there's not much other shit around here. No. So. You can go up there and hang out, drink beer, and play pool, and oh, yeah. bullshit. And they finally got Bush Light on tap again, so <laughs> you know I'm going to be up there. <laughs> like, It's still a dollar a, or $2? Yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's $2 for glass. I think it's like a 150 for Bush on, uh, on tap, though. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> like, people are like, what? Yeah, we're living in the 80s here. <laughs> I, uh, I always get caught off guard because it's... Um, mm-hmm. Every time me and Morgan come back and go to a bar around here and you get a drink and it's, it's hey, bad. I'll have a couple of beers, just open the tab and then we'll get, uh, I don't know, I'll drink a whiskey and like they'll fill up a whole glass of whiskey, uh, give her a vodka drink. Yeah. And like, I'm just like, oh shit, what's this going to be? And they're like, oh yeah, uh, oh yeah, clicking around. They're like, oh, that was $11. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> like there's so many times I go up there and just like, hey, shot for everybody around here. <laughs> Uh, are you sure about that? And it's just like, they do it. And it's just like 10 bucks. <laughs> yeah. It's like like 10 the- bucks for like 10 people. Yeah. Like it's so cheap. I was, like, this one time I went up there and I ate food also had a bunch of beer and it came out to like $12 or something like that or like 15. It didn't even, I don't, I don't think it even hit 12 or 20. Yeah. Which was crazy. It's like, this is so different from everywhere. Yeah. It's uh you don't find that anywhere anymore. No. It's a safe haven. Um, have you, did you grow up hunting and fishing and shit, or is that um, something you're just trying to get into more recently? Kind of. It was yeah. always kind of like when I was well, I was too young to actually like actually do it, but yeah, like my cousins would always do that shit. So, like, uh, I would kind of tag along with them, or they would take me out fishing sometimes. Um, but it was always, you know, my dad owns the farm, so he was always too busy with that shit. So like, we, he never really took me out and to actually do that. Which he grew up doing a lot of that, so and a lot of my friends do that, so it was just some one thing that I kind of wanted to get into as I got older. Yeah. Now that I'm older, I'm kind of like trying to find hobbies around here. I'm like, I kind of want to get back into like I kind of want to get into hunting, like really get into hunting, not as a kid, but like as yeah. an adult and yeah. actually like figure it out for myself. And same as fishing. Yeah. Like so, so fishing is definitely something that I think I'm gonna do with uh, my friends a lot, which we already have planned for this summer. So. Cool, man. And hunting, well, my dad owns part of a woods, so I'm probably just going to start hunting the woods and doing that stuff. Yeah. I uh, I used to go all through high school a bunch. Yeah. Just time commitment. And it is. It really it's like, is. It's hard to get back into for me because, like, once mm-hmm. I moved away and went to college, I just kind of stopped doing it. And I, mm-hmm. with doing video projects, doing wedding videos, doing, working on my house, shit, yeah. like, all this, like, side shit. It's just like, man, I don't have this commitment yeah. and an ability to really, I don't have a drive to get back into it. Mm-hmm. But I remember loving it. I just, yeah, it's fun. It like, there's sucks. a couple times I went out. Yeah. Like, just recently, I went, went uh, rabbit hunting. Yeah. It was so fun because I just got a new, I finally bought my own gun and got a shotgun. Nice. So, it was it was just a really good time. I'm like, damn, I, I need to get into this again. So. Are you sure you want to put that, that on record that you own a gun? Um, oh, shit. <laughs> you're getting an audit here Biden please don't arrest me <laughs> don't yeah. worry. I'm not going to go down that direction I'm not trying to make this a political commentary yeah, exactly. show or anything <laughs> yeah no please don't <laughs> yeah um no nice I think man. that but if, okay we, we're not going to make it political but I think the one thing that what did you ever like notice when you went to college like the hunting conversation was always weird to other people that were not from the country or was it? Um, I I don't know if it was weird. I didn't. <laughs> or you kind of disagreed with them, or they disagreed with you. I never I talked kind of like so. Like I never like was very extroverted and like reaching out to new mm-hmm. people a ton. But yeah. I the people that I talked to and got to know well just had no from a reference on it. Yeah, and they were open to the idea. Yeah, but like there's like dude, I I don't know if I could do that. Yeah, and I thought that was just well, very th- interesting. Like dude, yeah. I can't kill anything. And, like, I, I don't even want to see that. Mm-hmm. And I'm just, you know, for me growing up, it's yeah. like, dude, I don't know. I, I started going to hunt. And yeah, exactly. at such a young age, it, I've, I've never even contemplated it being something that I couldn't do consciously. Exactly. Like, I've seen my cousins and my dad 
fucking kill animals growing up. Like it was just a common thing, or I would shoot birds with uh, my BB gun, yeah, for fun, or tried to. So I don't know. Like I think uh, for me it was actually because I was I hung out with all types of people in college. So like I had people from like Detroit, like and so they were in the city area and they just found it really weird that like hunting or just you know we kind of disagree on some things. But yeah. it was just interesting because, like, I remember one time my one friend babysat a rabbit, and out of nowhere, I was just like, "Oh yeah, I, I ate that shit before," and they're just like looked at me like I was a murderer. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was good. Tastes like chicken. Like, it was yeah. just uh, it was interesting, you know. Like, I never hate on anybody for a different perspective. Like, I understand, you know, yeah. just growing up in that kind of environment, like you're just not used to seeing guns or seeing like animals, like dead animals. Yeah. So. I don't know. It's interesting. It overall. is. It's a, uh, yeah, it's funny. Like people have such a different frame of reference. Yeah. If like they came from that part of the world and you're from yeah. this part of the world and we're clearly very different people yeah, exactly. from, from your experience. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. uh, the only time I really got that was when I said I was going squirrel hunting and they're like, <laughs> what do you do with squirrel? And it's like, well, you eat it. You eat it. Yeah. And they're like, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? <laughs> yeah, <I'm> like <laughs> a squirrel's a rat. <laughs> And like, uh, especially other countries, I guess. Really? Um, so in Germany, mm-hmm. a squirrel, it, it, they like the direct translation is a tree rat. That's really? what it is looked at as. Oh shit! So like, when you say you're eating it, they actually look at it as like you're eating a rodent eating a, rat. A rodent rat. <laughs> and the thing is, like, they're not even like that dirty. Yeah, know? they're not like an actual rat or yeah. like a raccoon. Or anything yeah, like that. but that's what they look at it as. So that's it's weird. like completely. Maybe they have different squirrel than us. <laughs> I don't know. That they're eating out of the garbage or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah. No, it was, I think that was the biggest like culture shock in college. Yeah. But besides that, I I don't know. It wasn't even a culture shock. Like I knew, but it was just it was always interesting. Yeah. Like I never hate on anybody. For, have uh, you have you uh, been out of the United States ever? Actually, never. No, no. Yeah. Closest is uh Hawaii. Yeah, but besides that, like I li- we literally live like what two hours away from Canada. Yeah, and I've never been there. Well, they got that shit closed up now. I so. know. That, yeah, exactly. I don't even know what's <laughs> Since happening. Since you've been twenty one, probably. Yeah, no, probably. I don't even know what's been happening. <laughs> so, uh, uh, how was uh how's Hawaii? Oh, it was. Is that it? Was like how the pictures look. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was like per like I actually have like uh photo comparison because uh i was driving to the airport and we were in detroit and like it's winter time so it's like the trees are dead everything is just like dark and just gro- like gloomy and we go there everything i drove in on uh, we were driving on a similar road so i took a picture and there's just like a mountain with full greenery and just the sun is just on you so it was just it was a complete contrast of like uh entire like environment that i've never been in yeah like it's it's weird like the pacific is probably the most beautiful place like ocean and like just islands yeah in general i always love uh the environments that they have i've never been to hawaii so i it, it's so cool it's uh it's one of the places i want to go for sure it yeah. looks awesome like if you can any chance to go to like a tropical area i love tropical areas so like it's definitely cool just don't go to the main island of honolulu or what is it oahu why is that they call it because it's overpopulated Uh oh it's just like i don't know it's just the traffic dude it's so different because like oh yeah i'm gonna go to sunny jacks that takes what two minutes to get there it to do that there it would take you like 15 to maybe 30 minutes because the traffic is just always that's every on. city, man. <laughs> Shit. I'm never living in this city. Yeah, that's man. every city. Uh, it, dude, it's it's ridiculous. Just to get like it's just a little island and it, you're just Yeah. I mean it's it's definitely not the thing I think of when you think Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, and then you think the, like just tropical, <laughs> oh yeah, the natives are there. It's just like nah. <laughs> no. It's just like a bunch of uh uh, I don't want to sound bad, but it's a bunch of, like, Asian tourists that are there, yeah. too. It's a big, like, Asian tourist with, like, Japanese and Chinese. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, I was, here's a little <laughs> funny story. So, I was in the airport. We were leaving. So, I was just, like, it was just me and my mom that went. And we were leaving. Leaving from Hawaii? Yeah. And I'm so, assuming you went out there to, your sister lived out there, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, it was, instead of going on class trip, 
I went to Hawaii because nice. I was like Florida or Hawaii where I can do whatever I, I want. I would choose Hawaii every yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. That's fucking awesome. Dude, they have seafood. Awesome. Best seafood ever. But anyways, back to my story. So we, we were going to the airport and like there was so many Japanese or Chinese people. I don't even know. Like, but they're, they're definitely Asian and there's just so many of them. And we're like, we were late to our flight. So like my mom's like freaking out and I'm like. Okay, we need to like cut in line so we can like actually get our flight. Yeah. Because my sister loves to be uh uh she's perfect on time. Okay. In the most sar- sarcastic way. <laughs> uh, yeah. I found you. Uh yeah, no, but no, so we were on time. It's just that there was a lot of people that we weren't expecting. And my mom loves to be early, but so I was like, Oh, okay, I gotta I gotta go talk to these people and like try to get in line. And I go up to them. They do not speak a lick of English. So it's like, this is like the first culture shock in my life of just like speaking to someone that does not know how to speak English. So I'm just like, like I'm showing them the ticket. I'm like, hey, we need a, can we cut in line? And like, there was finally some like a uh, lady that was like, oh yeah, like kind of understood English a little bit. Like, can you speak English a little bit? Cause like, I don't know a lick of Japanese or Chinese or whatever you speak. Like, I don't know. So like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just trying to like get home. Yeah. So we finally got in line, but like it was just crazy. Like, cause that was like my first time ever, like actually having to like do the weird thing of like trying, trying to communicate. To communicate. And, yeah. yeah. Of like, oh, like how do you do this? Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's definitely a part of getting out of your bubble. Yeah. Of understanding like the world. Yeah. It was like, oh shit, dude, this is very difficult. Yeah. I wasn't like scared, but it was like difficult. Yeah. yeah. It was just like, I knew it was going to be difficult, but and, like weird and like, but I was like, I still did it. I was like, I don't know. Did you miss your flight? No, we actually got on time. We were, we were good. Thank God. But yeah, it was a, it was a definitely an experience. It was interesting. Cause I never really had like any experience with like Asian culture or like anything like that. So like seeing all these people, like it's definitely, Hawaii is definitely a part of that Asian culture. Interesting. So a little bit with all the tourists. Yeah. So that's crazy. I didn't know that either. Yeah, there's so many that apparently they love going there. So, uh, from my perspective, understandably, so I guess uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. it looks awesome. What uh, what did you do while you were in Hawaii? Surfed. Went to get low key seafood from like different places. Um. Really just going to beaches a lot. Um, I actually swam with Obama. I forgot about saying that. What? Yeah, I swam with Obama. He was there? Yeah, he was there like uh, probably like 200 yards down from me. They had the whole beach cut off. They had helicopters because we were, my sister's military, so she gets into these beaches. So it was a marine beach. Yeah. Um. So we were there swimming. It was one of the craziest beaches, too. Like it was really nice and like really low key. And yeah, like we were looking and we're like, what is up with all these helicopters? And there was like, my sister actually clipped, like got a picture of him and he was like walking down the water. I was like, is that Obama? Like what? Like we, I was swimming like 300 yards, 200 yards from this dude. Like what the hell? Like it was just weird. Apparently sounds, he was there while we were there. So that sounds like that could be turned into a verse for a song. <laughs> oh man, yeah. <laughs> I shared the same water as Obama. <laughs> God damn. Yeah, that's cool. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Are you good at surfing? I'm not bad. Oh, yeah. Because, like, I'm I skateboard terrible. a little. Like, I don't skateboard. But, like, I've always tried out skateboarding. So, I'm like, yeah, it's kind of the same thing. So, it's just you ride and you just sit there. And if you're good with balance, then you're probably going to be good at it. Like, yeah. if you have a nice, like, central balance. Yeah. You know, uh, last year during it's pretty easy. COVID, I... Uh, I bought a, a, a surf skate board, mm-hmm. like a carver board. So oh, yeah. It's supposed to, basically, the closest feeling to surfing yeah. as it is you can get on land with, a, with that sort of board. Yeah. It's got an extra bearing in it, so it's like oh, really cool. meant for, like, yeah. um, what's it called? Like, carving. It's called a carver. Yeah. And, and really feeling that rhythm down for riding That's awesome. It. Yeah, that's kind of what, like, isn't that what, like, longboarding yeah. kind of is, too? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's basically... That's what it's, I have a longboard, but okay. I just never use it. <laughs> yeah, it's a style of longboard, but it's yeah. shrunk to to really use for pumping and, and carving. So... That was really cool. I learned that last year during COVID. That was my yeah. experiment of, of being <laughs> in home and that not going awesome, to work. Though. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> not going to work. Yeah, there was another thing, too, that was really cool that I think I liked better than surfing. And it was, like, they had these boards... Where like when the 
wave comes in, like when you're on the beach and it has that like foam and stuff like that, like that light like layer of water. Yeah. Like you take this board oh, and yeah. it's really smooth and you just throw it and then you jump on it and you can just ride that yeah. for like a couple like uh feet and it's really fun. I saw people do that and yeah. never tried that. And I forget what it's called, but it's like probably I think it's more fun than uh surfing is. Yeah. So but nice. no surfing is it's cool though. Like the Pacific, like when it, you see the water, it's clear. It is that clear. Like it is, there's no filter on that. Like you can see the <laughs> bottom if it's like 20 feet deep. Like it's crazy. I've seen like a sea turtle and shit. Like it's, it, I don't know. It's like, I don't, it, it's really cool because I can't swim in like dark water. Yeah. I have like a fear of that shit. I'm like, no, don't trust that. Like my gut, <laughs> bottom just, gut. There's something underneath there. Yeah. It's like generational, like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> just like that's like ancestor, yeah, fear. Some instinctual mm-hmm. uh, built into you. Like, hey, there's something. Yeah, down there there's like you just don't <laughs> trust that. Okay, <laughs> get out of that water. Nice man, that's cool. Yeah. Has have there been any other places you've been in the U.S. that you really enjoyed? <sighs> Not really. <laughs> Sunny Jacks. That's yeah. what I would say. Um, I've never really. Uh, are you applying to anywhere outside of Ohio, or are you really looking to? I think try I want to start here? in Ohio, and yeah. then kind of, you know, uh, maybe work my way out for a little bit. Yeah. And then I don't know. I might end here overall, but I kind of want to start here, and then maybe if there's opportunities outside of it, yeah, do that, and then come back. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've thought about going and living with my sister because she's about to be stationed in Delaware soon. Oh, nice. Um. Not the, not Delaware, Ohio, but like the actual state. Yeah. But yeah. So I thought about doing that, but we'll see. Cool. I mean, play by ear, see what happens. Exactly. Sort of yeah. So with, uh, with you playing it by ear, it's probably not going to make this next question any easier. No. <laughs> of, uh, so what, where do you see yourself in, in five, 10 years from now? <sighs> I don't know. Um, I hope to, be doing something that I enjoy or like least I don't know um I feel like I'm just gonna be doing venues hopefully and yeah. like maybe doing audio engineering stuff maybe working in a studio yeah and maybe just doing multiple different things and just I don't know being skilled at what I do that's yeah. all I really want is just to learn multiple things in the music industry and just be skilled and actually maybe be my own boss yeah so cool we'll see how how are I'm gonna put you on the spot here since this is being recorded, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The kind oh, of God. the intention of this is mm. to to have you have a bit of a reflection mm. for yourself and hold and hold yourself accountable. It's like on, those letters that we had to write in school. Yeah, that's essentially what it is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, if are is like being your own boss, is that like truly a, a goal for you? Yeah, I think that's something I gotten from my dad. Yeah. From him okay. owning the farm and stuff, and just me, or and just kind of growing up in that environment yeah. of him just being his own boss and doing what he wants and and doing different stuff every day. I've gotten in that habit of like that's kind of what I want to do is just do hands on stuff and do it, do different things every day. It's not the same thing of I'm just working in a warehouse kind of thing. Yeah, of just doing the same thing over again. And you no, know, I respect people that do that, but it's just I don't know. I grew up in that environment of that. I want that for myself too. Yeah, have ownership of what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. And maybe just, you know, like want do multiple different things, just hustle pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, do, do you set like individual goals for yourself or do you find yourself? I don't write that? down anything, okay. to be honest. <laughs> I just go with the flow, to be yeah. honest. I'm, I'm yeah. just a very go with the flow and uh, op- if opportunity comes up, I'm going to try to take it or if anything I can do to help, I'm going to try to do that or anything like that. Yeah. So, I mean, I probably should start writing things down, but that'll probably be a new uh, New Year's resolution. Yeah. To start writing things down <laughs> cause I need to because I start forgetting. Uh, it's a, uh, it's hard to to keep yeah. consistent with it. I try to for some stuff mm-hmm. that I really want to make sure that I hold myself accountable for. Yeah. But like everyday stuff. It's it's hard to. No, I mean, yeah, it definitely is. Trying to get some sort of system in place and mm-hmm. make sure you're you're following it. Oh yeah. And it's so hard with like social media and like all this entertainment. It's so easy to just get lost in like Netflix and oh, just yeah. like not do the things on the list. Yeah. Or like video games or anything like that. So I'm trying to stray farther away from that and try to push into 
you know, working and doing different stuff like that. Uh, yeah. It's uh, really, just, it's really about like where you want to elevate yeah, yourself. Exactly. Like, um, cause I don't want to like people, there's a ton of people now with today's world of elevating video games. Yeah. Um, which is to, possible. Yeah. To yeah. there. But like if it, if you're looking at it as a distraction or just a, a very, very casual part of your life. Yeah. It's, it's not adding to your goals or yeah. your end goals. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, if I it's not part of it, then it's like, Hey, just focus on what you, sh what you think yeah, might, we want exactly. to be doing. And like, I see it as a distraction, but also a good thing. It depends on how many hours I'm spending. Cause like, that's a good way that I connect to my friends and talk to them. Yeah. Cause that's usually, if I'm on Xbox, I'm playing with my friends. I'm yeah. never on Xbox by myself. If I am, then I get off and do something that's actually productive. But like I always play with my friends or cause they're off in college or doing their own thing. So that's my best way of trying to talk to them and like staying connected. So, yeah. Yeah. It's like you said, um, earlier, I mean, you said you friendships are a huge part oh, it is. of yeah. what, uh, being happy is and finding happiness. And yeah. if that's a way to, to continue that, then that's mm. what you make work. Oh yeah. Easily. Yeah. Cause I don't, I don't know. I'm just always been a social person and I've always, uh, enjoy the relationships or friends that I've had. So I always want to keep that. And I've always, those are the best times that I've had in my life. Yeah. So I don't know. It's just something I, uh, realize is a big part of my, um, daily life that keeps me going. And, and this thing that we call whatever we call it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, yeah. It's uh everybody's just trying to navigate it and yeah, make exactly. it work for them. No one knows anything. Yeah, fully. that's that's a that's a good thing to take yeah. uh, away. Is I don't everybody's figuring it out. Yeah, nobody. That's true. If it, if there's a person that's like a hundred percent sure that they know the equations or system to fi to go through it, mm -hmm. I, you got to be suspicious. Yo, yeah, no, they're they're <laughs> totally lying. Yeah, there's no way. But yeah, no, I think that's the biggest thing too, is like just realizing that because I, I, or just not being, I'm someone that's always hard on like myself. I always, I'm like my biggest bully, I would like to say. Yeah. Like I always just, if I mess up, I'm, I'm beating up on myself constantly. So it's just more of like stepping back and realizing that, you know, to learn from those mistakes and know that everybody else is in this situation of graduating or like trying to figure out what they want to do for the rest of their life. Yeah. Everybody's so, there, man. Yeah. Especially at uh, 22. That's a, uh, Oh yeah. I'm only a few years older than you. I have so many people telling me I'm young. I have some people that are telling me I'm old. It's just <laughs> a back and forth hand to like tug of war with me. I don't understand. It's, it's really weird. Yeah. Well, eventually they're just going to get to the point where you're yeah, I'm just old. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'd rather have that. I don't know. See. Uh Dylan, uh how how do you define success? Mm. I feel like I define success as achievements, I guess. Okay. What do you but mean? But like self achievements. Okay. Like bettering yourself. You know? I don't think success is off of who what people think about you or anything like that. I feel like it's just more like what you think about yourself. Yeah. That's success. Like I Set a goal to, uh, I don't know, paint a picture today. Um, and I did that. That's success. Did you, you paint know? a picture today? I did not. Damn, dude. No, I just <laughs> I thought like, about really? the thing. I just thought about that. But, like, <laughs> it was off the top of the head. But, yeah. like, anything that you set out to, you know, do and you do it, you know, even if it's small or big, yeah. like, I feel like that's, you know, success. I feel like it's self-success is the that defines success overall. I don't think anybody – has the right to tell someone else that they're successful or not. And I definitely damn sure do not think money or fame is successful. I think that's no, just no at all. Like, yeah. No, I it, think, uh, is there that's a, fake success? What, what, did, what led you to, um, believing that? Is there a specific moment or an idea <sighs> that makes you really stray away from, I, fame or, or money as yeah. that definition. I think it's just my, my, f I just, the morals that I grew up with, yeah. you know, my, my family, what they taught me, 
you know, I was definitely raised right, like a lot of people around here, I feel like, um, just, um, yeah, that, and just me growing up, you know, maybe when I was 18, starting to make albums, I was probably like, oh, I want to get famous, but, like, just growing up, I started really, like, that's not anything, Yeah, you know, and you, you can see example. I think the biggest thing is seeing examples of these people, of just seeing what fame does to a person, it turns you off, you know? Yeah. It's just like, that's not, no. Why, yeah. why would anybody want that? I think it's a, a little bit of something that we've gotten, again, with the, like the internet world. Oh, yeah. Of breaking down that barrier mm-hmm. of people used to put all of these celebrities and people on pedestals yeah. of, oh, they're so perfect. And then mm-hmm. now that barrier has been broken and you can see into their lives and you're like, did you yeah, exactly. Like, it's, it's pretty like, mediocre at the end mm-hmm. of the day. Yeah, it's and, just like you're like anybody else. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. It's just not something, like, I would. I feel like I would just want, I don't want to get famous. Like, it'd be cool if I had, like, a strong following. Yeah. That's about it. Like, or just have, like, I don't know, just some support. But yeah. besides that, like, it's not anything that I really, I don't think that's success yeah. to me. Okay. That's cool, so, man. That's good. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think of when I was 22, wh- yeah. how I would have <laughs> defined success because it's changed over the years for me a hundred percent Oh yeah, of trying to mold and, and have that guidance of, mm. you know, following what, thinking about the decisions I'm making in life and where I'm steering my, my life in that direction. Um, it's a, it's an ever molding definition for me. So I don't know if I would, I would have said it 22. Uh, I was get money or was it get bitches, get money or whatever. <laughs> I don't know if it was that one, but I did not. I, I know I did not have a lot of money. So money was a big part of like trying yeah. to really strive for. And yeah. after in a sense, achieving that it's mm. uh lost its glamor of like continuing yeah. to, uh, uh, Hey, okay. I have a moderately um, decent income. So, at this point, like, is that really exactly. what I call success now at this point? And that's it's why, like, yeah, uh, that's not why, really. yeah, no, that's why I was saying like self improvement and success because you can, yeah, you can do all like me with my albums. Yeah. I keep on making albums, but it's just like, is this really fulfilling? Like I got to improve myself. I think that's what yeah, is what really fulfills me. It's not just making an album. Yeah. I feel like if I see myself improve is like where I see success at. Yeah. Cool, man. Where, yeah, I just feel like so many people are like, oh, let me make an album. I'm going to feel f- fulfilled and successful. It's like, I don't know. Yeah. Or like, I'm going to get money. But then when they get there, it's like, it's not enough. So yeah. they get more, but it's not enough. And they just keep on going. Yeah. Like a false illusion. Of yeah. Maybe after you have a taste of that, of of a following or, or a level of mm-hmm. six monetary success, you're like, hey, I'm going to record another album to get a million bucks. Yeah. And it's like, is, is that the right um level of goal that you should have at the project and probably not no exactly i just feel like it's self-love self-improvement and like just self-happiness in general of just like loving the things around you and just being grateful yeah i don't know nice man that's good yeah. i love it uh mm-hmm. 22 years old that's that's very insightful i, I believe that's good <laughs> really man. i don't know i just feel like i'm just talking out my ass <laughs> most people are time. yeah most people fly. i don't know um so, so uh with the new album, yeah. Um, how how do you now that it's completed? You put it out to the world. Yes. Is that a difficult process for you to like say I'm going to do this and just throw it out there and let it be its thing? Because um, it's going to exist forever now in the atmosphere yeah. of the internet, <laughs> yeah, and it's there forever. True. Um, <laughs> not to like put some more intimidation yeah. on you. <laughs> just, oh, shit. Is there anything that runs through your mind through that process of? Recording, releasing, um, and then self reflection. Um, yeah. I feel like so yeah, I feel like self reflection or yeah, that I feel like that's more it takes time for that. Cause I feel like now if I look back to my first album, I can self reflect like on that. Yeah. Or it takes time to like actually see all the process and stuff after a while. Where now, like, when I go back to my old album, it's, like, listening to a song, like, you going back and listening to your favorite song from 2010. Like, it takes you to that place of where you're at. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like, 
that's pretty much how it is for me when I go and listen to my old album. It takes me back to that mindset and that old, like, and, like, it's interesting because, like, it is, like, a way of improving because it's like, wow, okay, I'm so different from 2018 or whenever I released that to now, you know? So it's it's very interesting because it's like a time capsule. Yeah. So I don't know how I feel about it being there forever because <laughs> – like if I ever have kids or like my nephews when they get older, like <laughs> listen to that, like what is this kind of thing? I don't know. Hopefully it stands up. Yeah. Hopefully like it holds up over the years. Yeah. But we'll see. I mean, I mean, I feel like it's a time capsule overall. Like yeah. it's just like yeah, I did that. Oh yeah. You know, but I grew from it. How you know? do you? I I agree a hundred percent. That's great, yeah. man. That's a great outlook on it. How how do you feel of right now with the most recent one specifically throwing it out there and I, I mean, I feel like with there has to be some sort of sense of vulnerability yeah. of telling that story and, and like, hey, I'm this is is yeah. what it is. I'm cool with it. Is are you intimidated by that or is like, um, no, I'm confident. This is a part of me and that's it. That's a good question. Um, yeah, I feel like I would have been, but now that I'm like getting older and I'm like 22, 20 or 21, 22. It's just, like, when you get older, after a while, you just start, I don't know, I just start figuring out, like, it doesn't matter what people think or, you know, just a, you should put yourself out there no matter what. Yeah. You know, so, like, I don't know, it's just kind of, I, I I make the music overall for fun and for me and for, like, people to hopefully relate to, that um just whatever song. So, I don't know. I just feel, I just, at the end of the day, I don't really, I don't really care what people think of what well, I do, but I don't, I don't know. It's like a, it's like a rabbit hole. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, it's just like, I don't know. You just gotta be happy, happy with your work. Yeah. At the end of the day, like you gotta be happy with your videos and, yeah. and hopefully you learn something after maybe a couple months of looking back and be like, okay, well this is how I can do it better. Yeah. And not just been like this, that that's trash. It's like, no, but like, why is it trash? You know? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's just a whole like yeah. you know you can go for hours on this. Like, yeah, you so. can bounce back and forth yeah. of like pros and cons. And yeah, go exactly. And go back and like I don't care, but yeah, but I do. <laughs> but it's just like I don't know. Like, I at the uh, end of the day, you know, we had uh, a very maybe somewhat of a passive conversation on the same thing. We we're talking to Jonah. Yeah, about him putting music out for himself. Oh man, I hate that kid <laughs> when it comes to that shit. <laughs> and we both we both were on the same wavelength. Yeah. of like, dude, sometimes you just got to throw it out there. You do. Like yeah. it's. It's, it's, you can't strive for perfection yeah. and hold yourself back. But sometimes it's like, this is what I did. Mm -hmm. I created it and it's here. So yeah. I'm, for me, I got to put it out there. Whereas sometimes it seems like with Jonah where it was yeah. of, uh, Hey, I'm going to, yes, I need to, perf, uh, like, let's do another t 10 takes and redo yeah. it. Which is funny because he said that he's not like that when it comes to filmmaking. Exactly. That's why I'm like, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like he is. I feel like he's yeah. lying to us. Yeah. But I don't know. Cause for me, it takes, I thought I was a perfectionist, but I just go with the flow. Like, I'm, I like to feel music out. So, like, it was definitely different working with him and being like, oh, like, you, you're the type of dude that takes 10 takes, which is fine. You know, everybody's different, but, like, release that shit, please. Because <laughs> it is good. Like, yeah. I can't sing like that. Like, you are definitely a better singer than me and a lot of people that I've met. Like, you yeah. take, like... And even if it's not good after listening to it, like, um, a couple months later, like, learn from that shit. That's a way to, like, reflect back, yeah. as I was saying before. It's like a time capsule. You can go back and actually really dive deep of what what you want to improve on and what you actually want to sound like. Yeah. Or what you want, or what your videos want to look like. I don't know. Yeah. Just overall. Yeah. So. Yeah, man. Um, I got, I got a couple more questions. A couple more questions. Just start throwing um, them out. The... The one thing I want to talk about is didn't really even address it. I talked about it in the intro. Yeah. Was you and Jonah making the introduction song oh, yeah. for this podcast. I'm really pissed that you didn't talk about it in his. I know, dude. I forgot. I was yeah, going no, to. He, he told me that. I was like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I, I didn't figure you, you guys were going to remember. <laughs> um, but, you know. So what's, uh, how did that, I, I've blatantly, did you watch it or were you listening to it in Jonah's? Because I'm going to pull that back. Let's... I did. Back okay. and forth. Because there was a second where. I realized when I was editing and putting this together yeah. in post that I didn't give an appropriate shout out for it. Yeah. And I started using it. <laughs> yeah. You and just I, started just, using I flashed it the, I flashed it said like, shout out yeah, to, gonna... to 
Dylan Reinhardt. I'm surprised you didn't hear from my lawyer. <laughs> so, no, I'm kidding. So, I didn't really care. I uh, I wanted to bring it up to you, and I almost forgot it again because we're coming yep. to the end of this one. Um, so like, I appreciate that very much. Yeah. It was cool because I was just gonna just rip some, like cop like yeah copyright no copyright version, mm-hmm. use it, and uh, I'm gonna run with it. So I yeah. I appreciate like having an original piece that yeah, exactly to have somewhat of a story behind and you guys working for it. Mm-hmm. Um, so what what was it behind that of like because we were fucking around a little bit. You guys left. You're like, oh, <laughs> yeah, and then did. you check. Then we you text. Like, and he texted hey, me. We had two and, songs. Just saying, yeah. you should have played the other one too. <laughs> I have it here on my yeah. board. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, just put me and Jonah on. If I know me and Jonah talk about both of us coming on, so wherever that happens, we'll play that and we'll fucking tell the whole thing. Okay. Because that, that that version is funny as okay, hell. Okay, so that's gonna be the official drop. Is 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 that? Yeah, we can episode? do that. Yeah. Okay. But, um, yeah. Do you want all the details behind that, or just, just a little like, bit of it? Yeah, uh, I don't see. I didn't. You didn't really tell us what you wanted, so we were just like, I don't know. Do you want to go like, like western or like yeah blues or like I didn't, guitar? Or like I didn't know what you wanted, so we could redo it. If but if you enjoy it as it is, <laughs> then we'll keep it. But I didn't know what you wanted, so we like, I don't know. I just started playing the piano a little bit, and it was kind of uh, bluesy jazz. So yeah. like, he was like, oh yeah, I like that, and then I was like, yeah, I, I told him to do like a little like solo, so that's him like on the guitar, mm-hmm. kind of playing with that, or just kind of like, I'm like, do whatever. Uh, if it's not even on key or whatever, just do whatever. Like just do something cool, and yeah. he looked, yeah, he got the notes and he was playing it. So it came out. I don't know. It was just kind of a chill vibe. He yeah. kind of wanted a chill vibe behind it, I guess. So it was just like, because what it was all about life. Yeah. So. It's kind of a chill vibe, but it's not like hard rap or like hard rock or anything like that. We kind of wanted a traveler yeah. kind of vibe. I so. dig it. I, I dug it. Uh, like, cause I didn't know what I like. Cause when you guys made that, that was right after the, I dropped the first episode yeah. where I was still trying to figure out how I wanted to manage it and like what mm-hmm. the end, like my project was for it. Yeah. I was like, oh, fuck yeah, this is cool. And yeah. it's, uh, it's way cooler to have some of a personal personality behind it oh, from yeah. you guys than it was just to like pulling something off yeah, the internet. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I always, I don't, that's why I'm telling Chris Aker, if he's listening to this shit, I'm <laughs> like, any YouTuber around here, or like just in general, like they need, if they know a producer and know someone that makes music, just let them make original music on their shit because like it's so much. It elevates them and also elevates you too because you have original shit. So like yeah. you have like a sound and you also have like a face and all this different shit to it. Yeah. So like original, just everything brand and yeah. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw you two proposals on that comment. Okay. Um, I got a, I'm making a video from my recent trip to Texas. Yes. All right. Uh, I'll I'll edit the video. Okay. You want me to throw you it, and you can mix, like score it and yeah, shit. Okay. Make some yeah. Scored for it. No, I like to, cause I always wanted to get into that stuff. I yeah. just never like I don't know. I'm always trying to find opportunities in that. So yeah, yeah. Throw okay. That my way. And all I'll, right. I'll try my hardest to make it good. Okay. Make it original and all that. So. I, I dig it. I'll uh, I appreciate it. Yeah. In in return, can can I offer you a a music video for yes. You can, of course. No, as, as soon as I heard music video, yes, yeah, yeah no, because I want to do a bunch of them. Okay. I think it'd be so cool. So, so you could do whatever. You have all creative freedom. Yeah, I was listening to the album. I had the idea. Yeah. Track three. Track three. Bottles. Yeah, bottles. I'm gonna do a music. I want to do music. You want to do a music with that one? So, okay. So can I claim that one? Yeah, before you can claim that. One. Yeah, no. Literally, I told Chris, Jonah, and I, <laughs> I was the thing I was gonna tell you too. So yeah. I was like, you guys have all. Like, you got to claim it before it's gone, but you have whatever, any music video you guys want to do, any song. Okay. So, yeah, you got it. I'll think right of here a, is a, yeah, a I'll claim. Uh, I'll think of a, of some sort of storyline to put to it. I like, like I said up earlier, yeah. I like the upbeat, mm-hmm. kind of morbid nature, so I really kind of want to go in a fucked up direction. Okay. <laughs> with a really dark, yeah, gruesome, somewhat yeah. music video. That's fine. Uh, I'll think of a storyline for it. All right. So that will be the the opportunities to to cross yeah. our worlds here. Awesome. I'll, uh, no, I'll fun. I'll edit the Texas vlog. I have some yeah. kind of a new spin mm-hmm. on the video that I plan on doing. Okay. Um. So if you want to add some scoring behind it or yeah, some music, well, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll some. be cool to do that. I'll try it out because I've never done that before. Okay. Yeah. No, that works. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. 
There's the opportunity and exactly. question I wanted to get out of that. There you go. All right. That aside, man. Yeah. We're at the, f- the end of this uh, podcast. End of the podcast. End of this road. It's like hot ones. We're at the end <laughs> line. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have one final question. It's the final question yes. that uh, everybody is always asked. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dylan. Yes. <clears throat> what is the meaning of life? What is the meaning? I think it's self-defined. Um, and it's complex, but it's also very simple. I feel like I mean in life, you know, uh, you can break it down to so many things. I feel like uh, <laughs> I'm just going to keep on running on, just like not ever getting to the <laughs> end to it. Just like, you know, you can break it down to so many, It's so complicated. Uh, and then that's your answer. Yeah, this is my answer. <laughs> no, I just, uh, it's up to everybody of what the meaning of life is. My meaning of life is uh, really, as I said throughout this con- or um, podcast, is just, you know, friends, family, um, close ones, and um, just do pursuing learning, you know, and just uh, doing as much as you can to self improve and uh, I don't know, just give back to your community, whatever it means, you know, whatever it means to you, whatever fulfills you, I think is the meaning of life, you know. Yeah. Um, whatever, yeah, whatever makes you happy and fulfills you, I think overall is what the meaning of life is and whatever that means to different people. So, Oh, yeah, man. I think man. that's overall. Yeah, that's, that's my good. that's my meaning of life. That's all you need. Yeah. And I don't – there's not a right answer. There's not a no, wrong answer. Not. I mean, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, because it's so complicated because it's just like, what is it? I don't know. I feel like no one really knows, but I what I know, I feel like it's it's up to everybody of yeah. what their meaning of life is. You know, I feel like it's, they they're – they can define it in their own way. Yeah. So. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. And and on that, I I hope that you continue to follow your goals and and even though they're not they're not written down. Yes. You follow your start passion them down now so. in the the music industry. Yeah. Uh, you figure out what you want to do with your life. You're still young. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm there's I'm trying. Plenty of places to go and directions that you will go into. Yeah. Um, I hope that you continue to make music and follow your passion. And, and uh, you just we'll see. and you navigate yourself through this uh, alien filled world. Yes, alien, <laughs> alien and spiritual world, but not yeah. not Bigfoot. But not not Bigfoot. Get world. that shit out of my face, <laughs> <laughs> Dylan. You made I, it, man. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for coming on the episode. Yeah. Uh, again, thank you for the music. It's fun. It's, yes. I, I I enjoy watching yeah. it and listening to it. Yeah. And uh, the next step is we'll do this music video thing and, and really... Uh, oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Really honestly. get fucked up with it. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, God. Just blood. Just gore. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Yeah. yeah, no. I'm excited. So. Hell, yeah. Thanks, Dylan. Right, yes. Appreciate it, man. Yes. Uh, until next time, we'll do the, the Dylan, Jonah, and Jake podcast. Yes, sir. I. Till then. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, yeah, dude.